What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Krillin, the Strongest Z Fighter, Part 2. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now I could truly protect myself in the universe, well if Beerus came now and decided to make me space dust I still couldn't do much but everyone else was game on. Well the Frost family was, I don't think I could beat Cell or Majin Buu yet, they were way too strong maybe if I used my supreme mode, but it was impossible to use in a fight right now. I immediately started to train the other techniques that I got from Purunga, while under the stress of high gravity to temper my body, Instant transmission wasn't hard as my key control and sense were impeccable I could sense earth and countless other keys in the universe it overwhelmed me a bit, but I closed my senses to the mostly unknown or very small keys. I could feel Goku's key as I made myself familiar with it, I could also feel huge keys with a tint of frost in them, it was the frost family's keys they were all scattered through the whole galaxy. Frieza's was the nearest as I could feel he was half as strong as me in his first form. Then it was Cooler, who was extremely strong, he was stronger than Frieza's final form by a bit not counting his transformation. There was also Cold, he was also a bit stronger than Frieza's final form. Now I understood when Frieza said he was only bested by his family. They were a tiny bit stronger than Frieza, but not enough to thrash him around like a rag doll. I wasn't a saint nor a hero if Frieza intervened with me or Earth I would let him still roam around. Lives would be lost but as I didn't see them it was not my job. If I saw some injustice going on I would help, but I wouldn't go around parading myself as a hero of justice. I felt bad about what King Piccolo did on Earth because it was my home planet, my kin was on it, why would I care about the other alien races? Would the alien races care about my well-being or my planets? I'm sure as hell they wouldn't. While I was pondering, the Super Dragon Ball radar started beeping. It seemed a Super Dragon Ball was near. The ship was extremely fast as it made its way towards the Super Dragon Ball. The galaxy outside was beautiful, stars were shining everywhere and planets could be seen swiftly disappearing and appearing as the ship made its way within the cold space. After a few hours of traveling I finally arrived at the Super Dragon Ball's location. It looked like a dead planet. It just was covered by a layer of space dust. I looked towards it and I suddenly realized that I wasn't strong enough to get it, it was too big. I also remembered I couldn't use it as well, it required the language of the gods or something just like Namex Dragon Balls required Namekian language. I sighed. I couldn't gather all of them anyway. I didn't know how to breach the barrier between universes, and I'm not sure if Kampa or Vados would notice if I entered Universe 6 either. The Super Dragon Balls could be collected later. I wasn't in a rush to wish on them anyway. I already had everything that I wanted and more. Not only that, but I decided to let the ship wander among the galaxy while I trained under the high gravity combined with my gravity field and weighted clothes. My power was increasing every day. I didn't forget to continue training my techniques and their combinations. All of my current power multiplying techniques were Kaioken up to 50 times multiplier, Benevolent Buddha stand 10 times increase in its weakest form 15 times at its strongest, Super Mode 64 times increase, full. Power Technique 1.5 Increase, Godspeed 2 times Increase. I also learned some foreign alien techniques but I didn't have the required physique to use them, while the strongest couldn't even rival my Buddha technique. The combination of my techniques brought a qualitative change towards me so I didn't need to learn any more than these. I didn't care about most of the techniques but some could be used by my friends on Earth. There was a special Scion technique that Goku could use before he learned to go Super Scion, the Fake Moon Technique. There was also a mantra which could help him learn to control himself in the form. There was a technique for Tien's three-eyed race as well, it was a five times increase in power level, unfortunately, besides the Kaioken the humans couldn't learn other techniques. While the Kaioken wouldn't be pushed beyond 20 times in their hands as that was the limit of a normal body, scion or not. 
I could combine some techniques like the Kaioken and the full power technique, Kaioken and Godspeed, etc. I could even combine the Kaioken full power technique and Godspeed all together, but more than that, and my body would give out unable to handle the stress. And I'm not talking about normal Kaioken, I'm talking about it at 50 times its maximum. It would take me a while, but I could combine all of them with the benevolent Buddha stand as well. It might take whole tens of years before I fused every technique into the supreme mode though. But there was no need for such an overpowered mode till Beerus came. Speaking of Beerus, I hope my constant use of the Dragon Balls didn't hurt the balance of the universe. While it was unlikely what Perguna told me put me on thoughts hopefully he will sleep the same amount of time so I could prepare myself thoroughly. As my spaceship wandered around space my communicator suddenly started to beep. It was an emergency signal from a nearby planet. On the screen appeared a bug humanoid with big fly's eyes. He looked at me with a what I could only interpret as an imploring gaze as he started to talk in common tongue. Oh please help our planet traveler we are besieged by a bunch of space mercenaries. And they want to suck our planet resources dry. Quite literally they have a type of tree that sucks the energy of the planet. His explanation was cut short as two blue midgets appeared before him and snapped his neck they had huge bulbous heads. And they destroyed their communicator. The midgets were kind of foreign to me. I wasn't sure of who they were I didn't care either. I could use instant transmission relatively well now and the spaceship wasn't truly needed for me to breathe in space. My body could adapt to outer space due to its healing factor and key strengthening making me able to easily hold out on the void. My body would automatically conserve oxygen that it would reuse every time I was in an inhospitable environment. I could also use key to make a barrier around me which would extend the time I could stay in outer space. I also didn't need as much oxygen as normal humans to survive after the exposure to space. In time just like Frisia I would not need oxygen to survive in space at all. I got out of the spaceship and put it in its capsule mode. I put into my chest pocket and put two fingers on my forehead and started concentrating. The planet the signal came from was nearby, and I could sense the power levels there the highest was at 23,000 while the others were lower below 10,000. I immediately used a special magic technique to make myself invisible and teleported towards the highest power level. Surprisingly it was a scion who looked just like Goku hairstyle face and all. He was standing on a giant tree which was endlessly growing into the red sky. The earth below was cracked buildings stood in ruin. Bug people everywhere dead. Some of his subordinates were even eating the bodies and chuckling saying that it tasted like space chicken. From their words I heard that the name of the scion was Tulls. I didn't know if he was one of Goku's relatives or not but I didn't care about that. Goku wouldn't care about him since he was evil. I immediately appeared behind him and thrust a key blade straightly in his heart and bifurcated him in two. The cronies were immediately scared shitless but I obliterated all of them with mini lightning infused Kamehameha. They were all weaklings, unfortunately for the planet I came too late, it couldn't be saved it was thoroughly drained of its core's energy and it would die soon. It also seemed that most if not all of the bug people were exterminated. It was a pity since I came too late but nothing could be done. I observed the tree and saw how it used its roots to drain energy from the depleted core of the planet. Suddenly a fruit appeared on its branch. It was extremely big and it looked quite juicy. I think I shouldn't waste it, since the planet was doomed anyway. I grabbed the fruit and took a big bite out of it and finished it in one gulp. I could feel endless energy explode inside my body as my power level jumped to 1,500,000. This was the combination of the fruit and my prior training for almost six months. There was still half a year before the next Budokai Tenkechi tournament will start. So I still had quite a lot of time to adventure myself in the galaxy. There would also be four years after that to adventure even more before Raditz came to Earth. The planet was on its last legs, I didn't like the tree as it was feasting on planet's life energy. Even though I ate its fruit I wouldn't use it for myself, if I destroyed planets willy-nilly Beerus would go bonkers. Frisia could destroy planets from time to time because he got the okay from Beerus. From planet Vegeta till Namek Frisia never destroyed planets with high life force. Planets with high life force increased the universe's mortal level. And the best nourishment for this tree were planets with high life force. Thus if Beerus ever found it he would destroy it with whoever used it. I got out of the planet's stratosphere and made my way out of to the starry field of space. I clenched my hands and put them around my body my palms facing upwards. 
With all the techniques of the universe learned, I knew the Gaelic gun Vegeta's attack, so I used it to exterminate this dead planet since it was useless to let it remain here anyway. There was a zero chance for it to make a comeback since the core of the planet was destroyed. Destroying the planet would destroy the tree as well. Two problems solved in one shot. I charged the key into my palms as a purple aura started to gather around me and I shot it directly into the core of the planet it was already drained so it exploded and everything from the planet became space dust. I already scanned the planet thoroughly before I made this decision. The space pirates were bloodthirsty and had scouters so they killed truly everyone leaving no survivors. The universe was cruel where the strong reigned supreme, as the cold clan was the strongest they pretty much controlled the whole universe. There was the galactic patrol, but they were a bunch of weaklings who could only go after secondhand villains. They didn't even have a force as strong as the Jinyu force. I popped the ship out of its capsule form and continued my wandering around the universe while training. As the ship wandered, and I trained time was just flying, with the infinite food I had in the ship there were no problems for me. Loneliness wasn't even a concept I grasped anymore as my mind and soul attained a strength that not many people would have. I could control my emotions perfectly, and I attained a perfect martial mind enhancing my training speed. By the time the Budokai Tenkaichi came, I already reached a power level of 2,100,000. The higher the power level, the faster it increased, well if you didn't encounter a bottleneck, but with my body having its unlimited healing and my mind being extremely strong, there was no such thing as limits for me, I could train and train, and my power level will increase continuously. I didn't have a limit or a wall yet like Goku would have in the future, the wall which he would break in super to attain Ultra Instinct. I was passing by a nearby planet when I got out of the ship, and I was ready to use instant transmission to go back to Earth, but I suddenly noticed that the planet was encased in ice and its vitality was slowly getting lower and lower. This wasn't a naturally icy planet, so I decided to explore it before I got back to Earth. Goku was already extremely strong by now if my sensing of his power level was true. He breached 2000 becoming the strongest on Earth. I flew towards the planet and approached one of its more populated cities. Chaos was everywhere as armored grunts used their hand blasters to devastate the city. A giant ship was releasing a beam that was draining the planet of its warmth. I vaporized all of the grunts and took a better look around. The inhabitants of the planet were looking like humans but they had pink skin and pointy ears like elves. They were also tended to look more handsome. They were all hiding around behind rubble that the grunts created. They started cheering when they saw me kill all the grunts in one swift move. I smiled towards them and charged a big bang attack another Vegeta technique. It wasn't hard to learn it. After learning so many techniques it was easy to copy every technique of the main cast and villains. The big bang attack struck the ship squarely and exploded nothing remained out of it. I could swear I heard an old voice cough a curse out of it before it thoroughly exploded. Well whatever I guess. The villain was old and with one foot in the grave, I just put him in the grave completely. The cheering of the inhabitants continued for a long while after the spaceship's explosion. Out of the rubble came a beautiful woman with red hair and the characteristics of the race. She had an angular face and a small nose. She was quite a beauty if I said so myself. She bowed towards me and her voluptuous chest bounced. I averted my eyes but I still snuck a peek before she got up. She started to speak in a soft tone of voice as she blushed. I'm the daughter of the leader of this planet and I thank the great warrior from saving us from the evil Lord Slug's clutches. He has been draining our planet of vitality with his cold technology for years. If this continued for a few more years the planet would have lost all its of vitality and it would become uninhabitable. I nodded towards her explanation as a burly middle-aged man with handsome features also came out of the rubble and said in a modest tone of voice while also bowing towards me, I'm the leader of this planet great warrior before you leave, I would like you to join us for a special feast our race holds for great heroes and warriors like yourself. There was still a day or so before the tournament started, so I decided to indulge in this guy's wishes. When I nodded towards him, he started to smile, while he nudged his daughter she started blushing furiously. She was already red so her skin started to take a hint of blue. 
I flew down and landed the middle-aged man introduced himself and his daughter. My name is Mutart, and my daughter is called Musarka. We hail from the guardian family of the planet. As guardians we are also their leaders. I nodded my head towards his explanation and asked him, What was the deal with that slug guy? His gaze became frosty at the mention of the name slug and he answered, he started to terrorize us some years ago as he heard our race has a fountain that restores the youth of a person for a certain amount of years. He wanted to take it all for himself. When we refused and didn't tell him the location he started to attack and terrorize us, he told us that he will destroy the planet slowly and make his grunts and warriors destroy our cities till we collapsed and gave in to his demands. If it wasn't for you great warrior we might have given in right now as we couldn't handle this anymore. If I'm not rude, could Great Warrior tell me his name? I responded casually, Name's Krillin. He nodded his head at me like a chicken pecking rice as he guided me towards one of the more intact and grander buildings. Somehow food was already prepared as if a banquet table was prepared before they even knew I would come. He insisted on me taking the head chair as he would be on my right and his daughter on my left. She just continually blushed during the feast, there were also some other people invited at the feast. I could already hear outside the sound of machinery it seemed they were ready to fix their cities and reconstruct. After the feast, Mutart insisted for me to take a night off and sleep at the residential room I decided to humor him I could instantly teleport towards Earth whenever I wanted some hour of normal sleep instead of meditating would be relaxing even though I didn't need it physically or mentally. I stood on the bed as the door of the room suddenly opened. Musarka gently entered the room wearing nothing but a little bikini her fair red skin showing almost everything. Her voluptuous chest couldn't be hidden at all by the small cloth. I widened my eyes as she made her way towards my bed. She was blushing extremely hard as her face was all but blue. I could sense her father waiting outside the door. I used my telekinesis to close and lock the door. When Mutart saw this he immediately left. After a night of fun, I put on my clothes and checked that everything was where it was supposed to be. It was my first sexual experience in this life and I could say that it was pretty enjoyable Sarka was a virgin as well, and she didn't have any experience but it felt good enough. She was sleeping on the bed, the sheets covering her fair body. I made sure to not impregnate her, I didn't want any children yet, I wasn't sure if Marin would even come into being. Maybe if 18 would ask for a child. I didn't like children much. She suddenly woke up and looked towards me. She was sure that I was going to leave as I was already dressed. She smiled towards me and said, It was a fun night here, Krillin. I don't mind that you will leave. Our race has a very open mind concept about our bodily needs. You don't need to take responsibility if anything happens. I was pretty shy because it was my first time. And my father insisted saying that it would give us a good relationship in the future. I nodded my head towards her and said, Whenever you would be in trouble you can call me on this number. I handed her my spaceship communicator number and I prepared myself to leave. She was pretty cute but I didn't look for a long-standing relationship yet. It was just a little bit of fun between two consenting adults nothing more. I put two fingers on my forehead and concentrated. It was time for the last tournament before Dragon Ball Z started. I would enjoy watching the fight between Piccolo and Goku. There was no reason for me to join as I was already too strong for them. And I didn't need the money prize either I could just give some ideas to Bulma and patent them like the scouter and patent it as my idea. Getting at least 50% of the profit maybe 65% with my mind. I could already understand quite a bit of how this futuristic technology worked. I disappeared out of the bedroom and appeared on Earth on Papaya's Island. It seems I was early as not everyone was here. As I stood around and waited for the others to make their way towards Papaya Island, I was accosted by a blonde woman wearing a skimpy skirt and a blouse that made her assets show themselves quite nicely. She had blue highlights in her hair and wore sandals on her feet. She started to talk to me but I ignored her and she left with a huff. I wasn't interested in her anyway she looked a bit like a street worker ready to make a quick buck. Soon enough Yamcha and Tian made their way towards the registering place and I waved towards them. 
They both looked at me with wide eyes almost not recognizing me as now I was standing at a 1 meter and 85 centimeters fully grew up, 10 centimeters taller than Goku. After they registered they asked me if I would participate in the tournament but I shook my head and released a bit of my aura they were both overwhelmed by it. While they were both stronger now, Tien standing at a power level of 1100 and Yamcha at a power level of 950. They couldn't even withstand a controlled burst of my power. After a while Kaiatsu, Launch, Rashi, Puar, Oolong and Bulma came as well. Rashi was the most impressive besides Goku his power level reached 1300. Goku was still at the lookout and he was preparing to make his way here. I chatted with all of them and I told them a few my space adventures. They all gasped or laughed at some of my tales. Bulma was looking at me with a blush on her face and she seemed to be shy. Well I did grow to be quite a bit more handsome than the original Krillin and Bulma dug handsome men, but I wasn't interested in her, I knew her true personality since she was younger, and I could say she was a manipulative woman who would do anything to get her hands on what she wants. She was also quite bitchy and irresponsible. But I couldn't deny she was a genius when it came to tech. It was her only redeeming quality besides her above average looks. Goku came a bit later almost when the registered house closed, Piccolo was watching from a far turban and his original outfit on. He was glaring at me and Goku. It seemed Goku interacted with Piccolo when I was away. I could sense his power level while Goku's was now at 2200 Piccolo's reached 1900. I talked with Goku and it seemed while I was away Piccolo somehow got his hands on the Dragon Balls and still wished for eternal youth. He did so covertly and when the Z fighters saw the Dark Sky and Shinron the wish was already done. I guess I couldn't blame them I didn't kill Pilaf and he still could make a Dragon Ball radar I actually couldn't kill him while he was dumb and he had a penchant of trying to rule the world he was quite innocent. From when he firstly fought he didn't truly try to kill he was trying to incapacitate and take his wish unfortunately for him I knocked him out and took the wish for myself. That was the only time he could have taken his wish we made our way inside the Tenkechi arena. This year they made it so even spectators could see the preliminaries from outside due to the huge demand. I levitated while being cross-legged and waited for the preliminaries to start. The other spectators looked strangely at me, but after a while of staring they stopped and looked towards the fighting arenas. I wasn't surprised by what I saw. Tien, Yamcha, Piccolo, and Goku made it to the finals. Mercenary Tao should have been here as well in his cyborg form, but I didn't see him. The finals would be Piccolo vs Yamcha and Goku vs Tien. The fights were interesting, Yamcha tried his best to fight Piccolo, but Piccolo just stretched his arms, grabbed him, and then broke his spine on his knee. It was quite brutal before Piccolo could do anything else to him I intervened by pushing him away with a bit of invisible key. He staggered and looked towards me with fear in his eyes. I took Yamcha away from the stage and fed him a Senza bean which Poir gave me. Yamcha got up and looked at Piccolo with uncontrollable fury in his eyes. I patted him on the back and imparted to him mentally a suited training technique and the Kaioken. I even taught him how to create his stand based on his soul quality. He looked at me with gratitude in his eyes. I just nodded my head to him, humans should stick together. Goku and Tien fought a bit more than Piccolo and Yamcha but it still ended in Goku's victory after both took their weighted clothes off. The power level difference was just too huge and both their martial arts skills were pretty equal. But Goku being Goku improved all of his techniques in the middle of the fight and adapted. Piccolo narrowed his eyes at the display, unsure of himself if he could take Goku out thoroughly. He knew he was no match for me so the best thing he could do was try to hurt my friends. But with me around he knew there was no chance of that. The finals began and it was quite a bloody fight. Even though there existed a power level difference between Goku and Piccolo, Piccolo had the innate advantage of recovering his injuries at the expense of Ki. The fight was long and almost like in the anime, but with Goku coming out on top less injured and the stage not being destroyed. Piccolo closed his eyes. There was no reason for him to live anymore. He was waiting for the final blow. Goku shouted towards Poir to throw him two sens of beans. Poir was confused at the number but threw them to him anyways. Goku ate one and gave the other to Piccolo. Piccolo was quite stubborn not wanting to take the bean but Goku fours fed him it. Piccolo got up from the ground and glared at Goku. Goku just smiled and said, It would be too bad if you died. 
the Dragon Balls would be gone, and I would have one less rival to fight against, don't you think? Piccolo huffed and said, Even without the Dragon Balls, who else could terrorize this planet with that freak over there watching over it? He pointed towards me and I blushed inwardly. It seemed Piccolo lost all of his thoughts of world domination. I was just too strong and he thought he might never catch up to me. It was kind of true, actually. Goku just laughed at his words, I looked better at Goku and he still had his tail. It seemed Kami decided against cutting it off this time for some reason. I nodded my head, I could still teach Goku the fake moon technique and the mantra to control his inner beast self. Maybe he could even improvise an Ikari mode just like Broly. Goku was still a prodigy even though he wasn't on Broly's level of freakishness. After the world tournament ended, I could see Chi-Chi running into Goku's arms as they hugged each other. It seemed nothing deviated much of this couple's destiny. I walked towards Tien and imparted him the special three-eyed clan technique, the Kaioken, and the way to make a stand mentally. I did everything I could for them, everything else was on their comprehension ability. A stand power would be based on the comprehensive power of the individual who created it. My stand could go up to 15 times power level, but it would be rare for others to breach 10 times. With their talent, I guess Tien could reach up to 8 times and Yamcha up to 6 times. I walked towards Goku and motioned towards him with my hand that I wanted to talk something with him. He came towards me and I taught him the false moon technique and the controlling mantra. I even gave him a bit of scion history and the truth of his race. Goku's eyes glazed over as he realized he was the one who killed his grandpa and asked me, Krillin, where do you know all of this? I responded towards his question with a lie. During my travels in space, I found out a bit about your race on the ruins of an ancient planet. It seems that your race is also extinct and there are very few people like you out there. Goku nodded his head at the new information. He still wasn't over on how he killed his grandpa unknowingly but suddenly his eyes started to give a determined aura, and he said, Thanks for teaching me of my origins, Krillin. I will make sure I will never lose my control ever again and train fully in the techniques that you gave me. I nodded my head I didn't teach him the Kaioken, but I gave him the stand information as well. With his scion body he might master Akari faster instead of making a stand and cut off the humongous body of the Ozuru down to size so he wouldn't lose mobility or speed with the increase of 10 times power. Everyone was celebrating Goku's win at a new restaurant that just popped open near the tournament building. I looked around as the owner came to our table. I took a better look at him, and he had an afro and a mustache. He was wearing an apron and the uniform of the restaurant. It was Hercule the Fraud. It seemed he realized he wasn't cut for martial arts in this timeline and decided to open up a restaurant here. He immediately started telling us how he admired martial artists and how he wanted to become one himself but realized he wasn't talented. He even wanted to give us the food we would consume on the house. But I stopped him. Even though he would have become a phony fraud in the future, there was no reason to destroy his new business now as he didn't do anything in this timeline. The Zeni prize increased yet again this year to a 5 million amount. 1 million directly went to the bill. Chi-Chi looked with wide eyes at Goku's eating habits and she started sweating imagining how much food she would have to cook in the future. Things were pretty much done on Earth and four years of peace were rapidly approaching before Raditz would make his way here to disturb it. I was pretty much done with being on Earth for at least four more years. There was no reason to stay on the planet as I already gave out all the needed training techniques to the core of the Z-Fighters. I even taught Kaiatsu some ways to improve his mind and become a better psychic. His body type would never let him become a powerful martial artist, but he could become a very powerful physic as he had good talents for that. Piccolo knew he could do nothing anymore as well. Now in the future maybe he would see the bright side of things and become a good guy because if he remained a bad guy he would be forever lonely even though he was strong. During the earlier sagas, Piccolo liked to be a loner, but as he continued to advance in age, he realized that being alone wasn't for him. He started to interact more with others, and he even became Baby Pan's babysitter. You would see him everywhere he was needed. Piccolo had a soft heart under his tough look. Goku sparing him already gave him second thoughts on his path. Even though he got his father's memories, he wasn't his father. 
King Piccolo didn't truly reincarnate, he just infused his memories and a bit of his will on his progeny. I decided to talk with Bulma about the Scouters, and she agreed to it after a bit of haggling. I gave her the required information which I improved upon, as I got my hands on some Scouters when I killed Tulls. I even gave her some parts so she could find replacements for the materials that weren't on Earth. I didn't know where the materials were mined so I couldn't make my way there to get the metals and required materials to create the Scouter. Fortunately, Bulma immediately listed off replacement materials that would work with my formula. Took her no more than a few hours to create the Scouter and she clicked it while looking at me and she gasped as the number on the screen appeared. Above 3 million Krillin you. She already scanned the other power level on the planet and highest was Goku's. I just made an SSH motion with my finger and closed one eye while smiling mischievously. Most of them knew I was way stronger than them but not by how much. It ignited their blood and fighting spirit if they knew there was always someone there stronger than them. It was even more effective if it was someone they knew and grew up personally with. It would make them never relax and give their all in their training. After we settled the price and how we would share the money I got 63%, I also opened a bank account and told her just to dump my share in there. Unknowingly to me, the Scouters would change Earth civilization bit after I came back from my four years trip in space. I prepared my trip and announced all of my friends again of my departure. They were sad that I had to leave as soon I came back. But they understood me by now. They knew that I craved adventure and that I already saw everything the Earth had to give. They all started to wave me goodbye in the front of Capsule Corporation's building as my spaceship blasted into the sky. I also gave Bulma some spaceship blueprints and the gravity chamber idea. She should be able to make it with her father's help. Suddenly, out of nowhere, an irritated voice came into my mind. Human who are you and why can you spread my patented technique around? I will sue you. It seemed King Kai realized I was spreading his technique without his approval. Maybe he was observing Earth when he felt the key fluctuations of Tien and Yamcha when they trained the Kaioken. I decided to respond to him by directly teleporting to his planet. The blue humanoid man who wore a cap had sunglasses and a gown with the symbol of North Kai on the front gasped and fell on his butt at my sudden appearance and said with a gasp, The Yardration Spatial Technique? I nodded my head. It seems North Kai knew his stuff as the guardian deity of the North Galaxy. He immediately got up and fixed his glasses and gown and asked with a red face, How did you learn my technique? I never showed it to anyone else. I described to him my wish using the Namikian Dragon Balls, and he nodded his head with a thoughtful look on his face. So this wish of yours granted you knowledge of my technique, hmm. I can't stop you from practicing and using it, Whatever I will just take you as a student. King Kai immediately took me as a student in an attempt to save face, knowing he couldn't do anything to me as I was so strong. Since I was his student, he offered me his other technique, the spirit bomb. But I already showed him it, and he gasped and sweat trickled off his face as he said, Ha ha ha! How silly of me as you know all the techniques in the universe, it's obvious you would know the spirit bomb as well, ha ha ha! I asked him if he wanted anything else and after that took my leave. I left a key imprint in my spaceship, which I could teleport back to with my instant transmission. It was time for the next grand adventure in space. Maybe I could kill some more space pirates? I turned on the gravity at 300 and my gravity field at 3, pushing it to a full 900. I also wore weighted clothing and my body plummeted towards the ground. But I immediately started to levitate while staying cross-legged as my golden white aura started to encase me. Meditation combined with chi training under the huge stress of gravity and weights would train all the possible aspects of the body and mind at the same time. My healing factor was working tirelessly at repairing my broken bones and torn muscles, strengthening my insides at the same time. My power level was continuously growing, 3,500,000, 600. 4 million. I stopped at 4 million and decided that it was time to continue training my techniques. Unknowingly six months had gone by during my gravity meditation session, 
While training my techniques, the communicator suddenly beeped as a hazy signal came from a nearby planet. It was full of static as an SOS message was sent. It was time to be a hero again, I guess. On the communicator, on the display appeared an old man. But the connection wasn't stable enough. So his words came out jumbled and incomplete. Piele hell. Squad. Kill. I couldn't understand much from the words alone, so I decided to investigate by scanning the planet with my key sense. And oh boy was I in for a treat, there was a lower level of above 20 million on the planet, and it exuded an evil presence full of malice and greed. I used my magic to make myself invisible, and I hid my power level with my key control ability and teleported myself directly near the action. A bunch of grunts were shooting key blasts all around the planet which looked to be pretty advanced as a blonde-haired man with blue skin wearing an armor inscribed with a symbol that I couldn't truly discipher stood on a building with his hands behind his back. He was flanked by long-haired green man who wore the same type of armor and a helmet and a tall brown reptilian man. All wore scouters on their face. I wasn't sure who they were, but I kept myself hidden and started to listen to their conversation as the blonde-haired man was talking in a heavy French accent. Jewish, I wonder why Lord Cooler wants this planet. It's not like it would fetch a high price. We are wasting our time here. We aren't even needed the normal soldiers could have conquered it all by themselves. He was the head of the trio and the one with the power level above 20 million, the green-skinned man said. S. Salza, we just don't have to do anything and get paid anyway. Why does it matter, Lord Cooler? gives us easy jobs because we are his most trusted confidants, while there aren't any strong planets on his hit list that need us yet. The reptilian man nodded his head and continued. Yes, yes, door is right. Free money and relaxation is very good. We just have to observe the planet conquering proceedings and get a hefty sum for our non-existent work. Isn't it great, Salza? Salza scoffed at the two men and said, Dorney eyes, I know you two are lazy pieces of trash, but unlike you, I crave some action from time to time. Lord Cooler didn't install me as the leader of the armored squadron for nothing. He wanted for me to do great things, but we already conquered most of the strong planets and only the weaker ones remain in our west galaxy. We can't go to the north one as it's in the jurisdiction of Lord Cooler's brother, Lord Frisia. Dor and Nyes nodded their heads at Salza's words but they weren't truly interested they wanted to laze around and get the rewards. All of them had their guards down, it was an extremely good time for an ambush. I decided to kill the two lieutenants first and have a one-on-one -on -one with the captain. They were really near each other practically, they stood side by side, so I didn't have to do much besides getting behind them. Salza suddenly had a bad feeling, but before he could inform Dor and Nais, he saw how both of them were bifurcated in two as two golden key blades appeared inside their chests. Salza cried out, Dorn eyes knew you coward show yourself. So I just did my dots were already on three shining at the same time my power level was increased by eight times so my power level was around 32 million I toned my power level down a bit and it reached 20 million. I wanted to train my techniques and skills against this guy. But before I could do anything Salza clicked his scouter and said, Lord Cooler, we were ambushed on planet 683921. Dor and Nyes are dead, we require your presence here. The assailant is supposed stronger than me and I might not survive here. Before he could continue, I shot his scouter with a purple beam from my finger. It was the Colts family patented death beam. Salza paled realizing I knew this technique unsure of my origins. He shouted out loud, What are your ties to the esteemed Cold family? I just chuckled and said, No ties, I'm just here to have some fun with you. Salza's already pale face turned from blue to white he knew how Lord Cooler liked to play with his victims. He thought I was the same as him and he didn't want to have the same fate. I created a wall around us with my magic and as he tried to escape he ran into it. He tried to slash it with a key blade. I raised an eyebrow at his attempts. Seems this guy's key control was pretty great being even able to shape his key into forms. I threw myself at him with a key blade of my own and we started fighting, he had a pretty good blade technique, and as our power level was pretty similar he started to fight back. I parried his blade key and threw a slash towards him which he dodged, and retaliated with an overhead slash, I blocked it and I sank a bit in the cement that made up the building's roof. 
I threw him back with my strength and tried to slash him in two from the waist but he jumped and tried to fly. Forgetting about the box we were trapped in he hit his head on it and plummeted down. Seeing him doing such a stupid mistakes I cut off his head before he could do anything else and vaporized his body with a tiny beam. I sighed. The fight was pretty interesting but the guy wasn't particularly skilled in martial arts besides his keyblade techniques. He was also flustered and scared as he knew my power was higher than his. And he couldn't bring out his true strength. I didn't benefit much from this fight. I looked over as the grunts didn't know that I killed their leader so I just vaporized all of them with my key. Unknowingly to me it seemed I drifted out of the North Galaxy to the West Galaxy while I trained intensively. I left the ship on wandering mode so it never had a destination. Suddenly out of the void came a giant spaceship that was orange in color with white and black strips a giant purple glass was in the middle of its being and out of one of the hatches came out a purple reptilian looking guy with a white headpiece and red eyes. He also had a blue gem-like protrusion on his knees and elbows his power level was massive almost 200 million in total. I felt suffocated. I could become stronger than him by 56 million if I turned on all my dots but I didn't want to spoil the surprise for him. He looked at me with a cold look in his red eyes and said, It seems Salza is dead. What kind of unique being are of you? Bald head no nose? What kind of race do you come from? He asked himself ponderingly. I'm not sure if he could sense my key, but he didn't look agitated in the slightest. It was like he was taking a walk in the park and he saw a cute dog he wanted to pet. He continued his thoughts. Whatever Salza was good, but you are stronger want to join me. I'm treating my subordinates pretty well. He shrugged his shoulders and asked me nonchalantly. I shook my head and said, We don't have the same kind of intentions when it comes to planets. I'm one who likes the original race to have their planet. Cooler looked disappointed and said, Oh well, if that's what you think, then don't blame me for what I'm going to do now. He pointed his finger towards me as pink energy started to appear at the tip of it. He pointed it straight at my head, but immediately all of my six dots started glowing and I appeared straightly behind him and kicked him in the back. Cooler plummeted towards the planet and crashed in the buildings down below. I started to charge up a Gaelic gun towards him as he started to get up the rubble as he growled. Power multiplying techniques? I see those dots of yours increase your power level as they lighted upon your forehead. Whatever. This isn't my full power. He started to charge up his aura as his power level increased to 300 million, and he easily dismissed my Gaelic gun. I immediately used my full power technique and some strain appeared on my face. Even though I could use up to three combinations it wasn't like I used them flawlessly with no drawbacks. Cooler's eyes widened when my power level exceeded his again and I delivered a key enhanced punch towards his torso. He blocked it with both his arms which he put in an X around his body. Both of them cracked and he grimaced. He was from Frisia's clan so he should be able to transform once more. I couldn't let him, I could still use Godspeed, but I couldn't keep all of the techniques combined for a long time. But unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough, Cooler immediately started to grow taller as armor encased him. His face got covered by a spiky helmet and he grew buffer as well. His power level rocketed to above 600 million, almost 700 million. He started to batter me like no tomorrow but my healing factor could keep up. My bones would break, my internals would rupture, but they would heal seconds later. Cooler looked at me with a questioning gaze. His power level was way above mine, but he couldn't kill me with his punches. He decided to vaporize me directly afterward. He put his hand up as he charged a supernova above his head. I started to charge a final flash as I put my hands together and started to charge up as yellow key appeared in them. Cooler sneered under his armored face and said with a muffled voice, You should know your limits, your power level is way below mine. Do you think you can do anything to me? I smirked at his words as I activated Godspeed and my power level doubled, his eyes widened, but he already threw the supernova at me. I hit it head on with an electrified final flash, my power level was already nearing 800 million. But Cooler immediately started to buff up and his muscles started bulging veins appeared around his enlarged muscles as he put all of his key inside the supernova it started to overpower me. 
and it was coming for me closer and closer, I couldn't push it back. His power level had gone above 1 billion, and it was still rising, it could destroy my body and make me weak for a while but I gritted my teeth and said, Kaioken times 2. My power level skyrocketed reaching above 1 billion and a half, and it pushed the supernova back. Cooler wasn't dumb enough to take it head on and dodged it as it flew outside the atmosphere and exploded in the cold void of space. Anger was all over Cooler's face if that hit him he would have been injured quite severely. I panted down on the ground as my key was depleted and body injured. My healing factor worked to heal my body and internals but it was really slow. The Kaioken technique put a high burden on the body combined with all of the other techniques. Key isn't supposed to multiply that many times with no drawbacks. My body-based structure still wasn't strong enough to handle it. Cooler immediately appeared in front of me and grabbed my head as he started to run around and run me trough buildings just like the OG Broly did to Goku. I was too weak right now to stop me and he seemed intent to torture me before he killed me. After he trashed me thoroughly with his body he started to use his death beam and pierce me all over my body. I looked like a bee nest, but the holes were already starting to close. Cooler grunted as he started to get bored of playing with me. I didn't sound out a peep during the whole torture. Even though it hurt me my mental fortitude helped me to endure everything. Cooler gathered another supernova and shot it at the planet. Lava started to boil down everywhere as he left. He thought I couldn't survive in outer space as well as the explosion of a planet so he left with his spaceship and didn't look back. I grimaced as I got up the ground the planet didn't have much time left and the impacts of my fight with Cooler doomed all of the other possible survivors. I put two fingers on my head and concentrated. It was quite hard to concentrate with depleted key and a messed up body but I did it. I disappeared off the doomed planet and appeared on a planet that looked similar to Earth. Everything was red though, Earth sky and trees. The person who I arrived in front of was red too. She had white hair and a voluptuous figure. Her face was pretty, and she asked with a worried face and a cute voice, Aya, are you okay, mate? I just collapsed in front of her to conserve energy and fasten my recovery. She took that as an emergency sign. I woke up a bit later in a futuristic-looking house, with a towel on my forehead tucked between some fluffy sheets. I got up from the bed when the woman entered the room with a tray of food in her hands, and she put it down on the desk before taking a chair and propping herself on it while looking at me with her hands supporting her head and asked in now what I realized to be heavy Australian accent. So what's your name big guy and what's your story? I didn't know where I was as I hurriedly checked for any kind of key and I teleported to the nearest one and I just responded with a simple, I'm just a traveler that had a bad fight. Could you tell me where I am? She looked at me with a questioning look in her gaze and answered, You are on Space Australia, darling. You must get a hard hit on the head. I blinked my eyes at her and asked myself, Did Space Australia exist in the Dragon Ball universe? What the hell was this? She looked at me and continued, Whatever, Mr. Traveler, could you at least tell me your name? I responded to her. I was grateful she took care of me and there was no reason to lie her so I just told her my real name. Not many people knew it in this part of the galaxy anyway. My name's Krillin, what about yours? She beamed at my positive response and she answered, My name's Jika, nice to meet you Traveler Krillin. I sweat dropped that name seemed familiar, the red skin white hair. Was this G's home planet? I shook my head to clear it and Jika started to laugh at my action and said, It seemed you took a hit to your head, you bloke. I started laughing too. It was pretty infectious coming from her. I got up and sat cross-legged on the bed. She got up from her chair and gave me the food she brought. It was an Australian breakfast which consisted of bacon toast egg sausages and fried tomato. I ate it and surprisingly it was very good. She beamed at me as I ate the food it seemed she enjoyed having people eat her. Cooking. Then she remembered something and her smile turned to a frown. I put down the fork and asked her what happened and she replied, Nothing much I just remembered when I was young and cooked for my little bro Jis. Now he is a big shot who can't visit his big sis anymore. He is an officer in a special unit in Lord Frisia's army. Seemed I was right, she was Jis' sister. 
I nodded my head towards her and started to comfort her by patting her back. I knew how hard it was to live alone as after my parents passed away, I had no one else in my last life. She started to get up from her low mood and started to smile again. It seemed she was a happy person naturally and few things would bring her down. She started to ask me about my travels so things wouldn't become awkward and told her about some of my adventures omitting the fight with Frisia's brother. And she gasped and asked me, So you truly saved a princess and her planet from the destruction of a guy who wanted to drain it of its life with a cold technology? I nodded my head it seemed she liked stories. I didn't scan her power level up till now so I decided to do it now. It wasn't too strong but not weak either, her power level reached almost 10,000. It seems she was kind of talented just like Jeez. We took the conversation outside as I looked around the house, I spotted a few framed photos around the wall, some of them were of the siblings, and some of them were of a middle-aged couple hugging each other, the frame was black. I guessed it was an homage brought towards the two deceased members of the family and didn't comment on them and asked while I pointed towards a frame of her and Jeez doing a victory sign while she held a big animal plush. So this is your brother? She nodded and her eyes glazed over it was obvious. She missed him enormously and said, Yeah, he is Jeez. I can't believe there's been already 10 years since that photo was taken. The next day he was enrolled forcefully in Frisia's army due to his high battle power and talent and taken away. She started sobbing. It seemed Jeez didn't join Frisia's army willingly. I patted her shoulder. I didn't know what to tell her, so I improvised. Doesn't he get free days or can't he call home? She brightens up a little at my words and says, Well, he calls from time to time from his unit's ship communicator, and I can see he made great friends with this guy Birder, who claims himself the fastest in the universe. She started giggling at the mention of Birder and his antics, or how he has to do strange poses with his captain his captain saying that they are vital to their team's formation. Here she blown in full laughter. I smiled it seemed my words took her mind off her loneliness. But she was brought down again and she said, But he can't visit at all. In Frisia's words, the Jinyu special unit doesn't get any free days they work 364 days a year. And they don't get a day off even on Space Christmas. Frisia is a slave worker. At least Jis says the pay is pretty good and his friends keep off his loneliness. I nodded my head towards her words and asked her, Don't you have any friends or another immediate family around to keep you company? She shook her head, but a small smile still appeared on her face as she whistled at a high pitch. Out of nowhere a black blur came into her arms, and it started barking. It was a strange type of space dog. It looked like a pug. But it wasn't a pug, I couldn't describe its appearance well, but it was pretty cute. She started to pet the dog in her arms and said, This is my friend Cho Cho. He is the only one who likes my company. She seemed sadder when she said those words and I asked her tactfully, Why does no one want to hang around with you? She immediately scoffed at my question and said, It's not because of me, I'm not sure myself. They are just scared to be around me for some reason. It was a strange thing. Why would anyone be scared of her? She seemed nice enough to me, I asked her if we could tour the city, and she nodded her head. As made our way along the sidewalk I sensed and observed the city and its people, it was like more futuristic earth with people of red skin and white hair. Everyone was pitifully weak compared to Jaika, most not even reaching 100. I think I could understand why most people were scared of her, her brother was in. Frisia's most favored unit, and she was extremely strong, most people were scared of strong individuals who had any kind of relationships with the Cold Clan. I couldn't help her yet in this regard. There was nothing I could do against the Cold Clan as a whole. I could kill Frisia, but the retaliation from Cold and Cooler wasn't something I wanted to face yet. Frisia was the weakest and youngest of the Cold family. Also, he never trained one day in his life, that's why his power level was relatively very low compared to the others. His brother already had a fifth form and a power level above 1 billion at 100% of his power. Frisia barely reached 10% of his power at 100%. His 100% was even lower than Cooler's final form while being suppressed a bit. I guess Cooler was just cooler than Frisia. We wandered around the city and people looked with aversion and fear at Jaika 
and she seemed even more down than when she talked about it, and we made back our way towards her house. As I observed the city I realized that her house was in a pretty good neighborhood, and it gave off rich vibes. It seemed Jis would also send money home. We made our way inside, and I thanked her for taking care of me, but she suddenly stopped me by tackling me down and starting to kiss me violently. I was extremely surprised and I pushed her back and stopped her while asking, Is this right? Her face was even redder if that was physically possible and she said, I don't care. I haven't had a man since ever and my body really can't handle it anymore. Please consider this as payback for me helping you. I couldn't argue with her if this was the payback she wanted to. I took her by the waist and started to kiss her back furiously. I put her back on the bed and covered her with some clean sheets. My clothes, unfortunately, got drenched and since they were quite old anyway I decided to vaporize them and get a new outfit. I decided to imitate Goku Black's look since his outfit was one of the best in the show, in my opinion. I materialized the clothes and looked myself in the mirror. It was a GI similar to Goku's but in fully black color with some red linings here and there. I nodded to myself I looked pretty good in it. I made my way outside as to not wake up Jika and decided to make her some food before she woke up and I left. There was no reason to remain on the planet. I knew to cook a bit, after all I had quite a bit of infinite amount of ingredients on my ship, I wasn't a master chef but I could cook decently in my opinion, I decided to make some special ramen. I doubt this planet ever got to eat something like this since it was future Australia in space. It didn't take me much time and all the needed ingredients were already in the kitchen. I came out of the kitchen with a steaming bowl of ramen and made my way inside the bedroom. Jaika already got up and she was extremely embarrassed at her sudden outburst as she bowed to me and told me how sorry she was. I just smiled at her and motioned towards her to try the peeping hot bowl of ramen. She never ate something like this before and she was very curious. I materialized some chopsticks and taught her how to eat with them. She blew a bit on the noddles and put them in her mouth. Her eyes practically became stars as he engulfed the ramen bowl immediately. She almost ate the bowl too. I laughed it seemed she really liked the food, and so I gave her the recipe. She nodded her head at my instructions and she suddenly seemed sad again. I asked her what was it about and she responded, You will leave won't you? I nodded a solemn expression on my face, I couldn't stop here. I already indulged here a lot by staying here for a few days instead of training. At least Cooler thought I was dead so he didn't put a bounty on my head or anything like that. I still needed to train if I wanted to dismantle the Colts Family Planet Trading Organization and put a stop towards their evil ways. She started sniffling as tears appeared on her face. I put my hand on her chin and made her look me straight in the eye and said, I enjoyed being with you but there are greater things out there that I have to do. I will, however, make sure your brother Jis comes back to you in time. She nodded and started smiling towards me. Her tears were all gone. She knew I was strong. It was some type of instinct I couldn't describe with words. I made my way outside and popped open my capsule ship which I changed safely from my other GI before I vaporized it. I got inside and blasted in the random wandering mode. The spaceship blasted off the surface of the planet. Jaika was waving at me while shouting, Goodbye Mr. Krillin. I won't forget the days we spent together. It was time to intensify my training. My beating from cooler woke me up a bit. There were still tons of people out there stronger than me. I turned the gravity up to 1000 while I increased the field around me to 5. 5,000 times normal gravity crushed me directly to the floor of the ship so that I couldn't even get up even if I wanted to. I laid on the floor like a pancake as the gravity pushed me down. My healing factor was working overtime as my bones were breaking and healing continuously I tried to get up, but I just physically couldn't, so I just laid there while I did some mental training. After a few what I felt like were hours but were actually not, I could finally get up from the floor, my power level increased to 5 million and 500,000. While my body became way stronger than before, but it still wasn't strong enough to take on cooler without the Kaioken. I stopped the gravity and looked at the watch that would keep up the time of my training, and four months had passed. I blinked my eyes. Time around me felt slower than usual under this intense gravity, and I only thought that only a few hours had passed. 
It seemed after the gravity reached a thousand and above your sense of time will be distorted. I checked the communicator but no new messages appeared. It seemed I was alone for the time being. I didn't truly want to continue my training so I decided to cook something. I decided that I would make some bacon pancakes and a super sandwich, which would consist of beef sausages, bacon and fried eggs, some fries on the sides and tomatoes, pickles and pickled lettuce. After I cooked and ate everything, a voice appeared in my mind, it was King Kai, and he sounded pretty urgent at the moment as he said, Krillin, there's an emergency in hell, because of the influx of negative energy due to the death of quite a high amount of villains these days an abnormally strong demon was created. Even though he is weaker than Dibura, no one has the time to deal with it now. A change of pace from training was good for me, I needed to fight more people, I was still too inexperienced, cooler spaceship took me by surprise. I didn't fully realize the speed of spaceships that the Cold Empire got their hands on. It was pretty impressive and just a little below mine, which was wished from an almighty magic dragon. I thought theirs would be way slower but it seemed not, fortunately, cooler didn't kill me that day, as long as I wasn't strong enough I wouldn't start fighting randomly anywhere anymore. I already did a lot of heroic acts when I wasn't a hero, that was enough for now, helping Akai was another thing. I felt bad for King Kai as I took his technique and never gave him anything in return. I even was quite cold to him back then and even made him embarrassed. I teleported using my instant transmission towards his planet. He was expecting me and he started to explain the situation better. This demon calls himself Aatrox the World Ender. He was created due to the influx of negative thoughts and sin created by the deaths of quite a bit of evildoers. Hell is a special place that takes the sin of evildoers and tries to purify it over time by torturing their residents. This time too many evildoers died, and it made the system overwork itself letting the sin transform into a new demon. I nodded my head I was embarrassed it seemed my killing of all those villains created this Aatrox guy and he was almost as strong as a Super Scion too if he was just below Dibura. King Kai continued, I don't know anyone else as strong as you that could take on this job in our galaxy. So I need you to slay or seal this Aatrox. Make sure he can't get out of hell into the mortal world as he would create much chaos. I nodded my head towards King Kai and said, Don't sweat it, King Kai. I will do my best to beat him and stop his rampage in hell. King Kai looked visibly better after hearing my answer and said with a straight and serious face, Now for you to get to hell you just have to jump down. I knew where hell was so I just did what I was told to, and I jumped down trough the yellow clouds that resembled the flying nimbus. I immediately plummeted to hell, and it was just like I expected it. Lava was flowing everywhere, demons were at large while some were bathing in lava and others wore warden uniforms and put the sinners in their place, hitting them with police batons or punching them. It was just like a jail. I could feel immense and evil key coming from the north. The warden demons ignored me as they got the message from King Kai that I was their backup. They couldn't do anything to Aatrox, so they needed me. I flew quickly towards the north, my golden aura encasing me as I met with Aatrox, the world ender. He was a giant monstrosity with red skin and dark horns that extended into the red sky of hell. He had a giant greatsword in his arms as he waved it around and swatted the warden demons that tried to fight and capture him. He decapitated them, cut them in two and did all of his best to make sure his victims were in true pain before they died as he laughed maniacally. He looked towards me and shouted, Come mortal as I shall sever your shoulders from your spine. Let's fight. There was no talking needed for this guy. I immediately activated my super mode and started to fight with him. To counter his great sword I made my key sword and started to slash at him. He dodged easily and slashed at me at a tricky angle, he was a sword master. His slash hit me head on, and my arm flew away. But another one grew right after. Aatrox narrowed his red pupilless eyes and said while laughing, Ah ha ha ha, you can regenerate? This is great mortal, we can fight at our heart's content then. After I will kill you, I will drown the outside world in blood and carnage. I didn't say anything there was no reason to, he had the skill advantage and he couldn't kill me directly due to my healing factor. He was a good fighting opponent as I could train my sword techniques on him. 
We fought for ten days and nights, we both had pretty much inexhaustible stamina. Me from my healing factor and him because he was on his home ground in hell. At first, he dismembered me easily, he parried all my hits and dodged with ease. But the more I fought him the better I got at swordsmanship, I started to parry his shots and dodge myself, sometimes I would slash and even cut an arm or leg down. He could regenerate himself just like me. He had a source of boundless sin in hell which he could himself with. After a while I disarmed him of his greatsword, he wasn't as strong as Dibura he was way below Super Scion 2 level. King Kai made a mistake. Everything there was to him was his limitless regeneration stamina and his great sword skills, even though he was a bit stronger than the average Super Scion. But King Kai did say there was no one else could beat him in the North Galaxy. It was true as Frisia wouldn't want to do this. He might even kill King Kai if asked. Goku didn't mature yet so there wasn't any true hero of the universe yet. I activated my benevolent Buddha stand and sent a strand of pure Buddha key towards Aatrox it started to burn him as he shouted. Mortal I will kill you and all your loved ones. He motioned for his sword as it flew in his hand and he was ready to attack me again. But I stopped him as one giant palm from my Buddha stand grabbed him as I started saying a Buddhist chant. Amitab, go and be reborn Aatrox, be better in your next life. My key from the Buddha stand fully enveloped him and he burned into cinders transforming into ash and drifting down. His sword was destroyed with him nothing remained of him, only ash. The wardens of hell who were watching from a distance approached me and bowed. There were all types of demons in hell, but the wardens were mostly horned demons the higher level of demons. They were the most humanoid of the bunch of demons as well. The captain of the wardens got up and said, Send our regards to King Yema when you get out. I nodded my head towards him as one warden showed me the exit of hell. It was a crevice that was going up as a multitude of stairs were inside of it. As I got up the stairs I saw that the final exit was blocked and I pushed the thing that was blocking it. As I got outside I was surprised to see a giant red man with a beard and horns who wore a purple suit. On his head he wore a helmet that had the kanji for Yama. He opened his book at a certain page and said, Krillin, human born on earth, extremely powerful, status, alive, great good karma, chance of getting into heaven, guaranteed. I bowed towards King Yema and said, the captain of the wardens down below sends his regards, King Yema. Yema nodded towards my words, and he muttered something about his mahogany table, and how he wanted to see his children and that Karen was a ruthless bitch. I sweat dropped the image of the great King Yema who judged if souls go to hell or heaven dropped a bit in my mind. I took my leave and decided to report to King Kai as well before I took my leave back to the mortal realm. I teleported towards King Kai's planet and told him what happened he nodded his head happily and his whiskers moved in a certain pattern. He called out loud, Gregory, Bubbles, Krillin did it, it's time for celebration. Out of his house came a monkey and a big bug. They all started dancing in a happy mood and invited me to share lunch with them. I accepted after fighting ten days with a world annihilator demon, I was a bit hungry after I ate, I bid my goodbyes towards the trio and teleported back towards my ship. I made sure to hide it on an abandoned asteroid to make sure no one got their hands on it. There were still three more years before I would go back to Earth so I just continued to train, Six more months gone by and my power level increased to almost 7 million. I was sure that by now I could handle cooler, but it wasn't the time yet. I needed to thoroughly annihilate him and his family while Frisia would be a piece of cake now. I didn't know how strong King Cold was. In the anime he was killed by Trunks while he was in his second form only. But this universe that I was in was quite a bit different than what I truly remembered. Goku was stronger in this universe than in the original when he started his journey. I realized this wasn't the original Dragon Ball universe, I was wrong. I didn't question how strong Cooler was as I didn't truly know who Cooler is. From what I observed of him he should be Frieza's sibling. Frieza talked a bit about his family when he fought on Namek but didn't mention a brother. I thought that he only had a father, but it seems I was wrong. As everything was different than the original, I wasn't sure if the events would play normally either. Up until now it was the same but what if? I shook my head what would come would come I just needed to be prepared for it. 
and the best preparation was higher strength. I still had two and a half years left before it was time to come back to Earth. I promised them that I would come back, and I couldn't truly break my promise to my closest family and friends. I continued to train under high gravity while simulating the fight with Cooler again, seeing what I could have done better and what I have done wrong. And I could say, I did everything wrong. I wasn't prepared for Cooler to appear and he did quite the big number on me. I would have died a nameless grave on that planet if it wasn't for my healing factor. And Cooler underestimating me. I realized that I was still too immature. Knowledge and mental strength didn't mean wisdom. I was still acting dumbly. Maybe I shouldn't have shabbowing G's sister either? Even though she was in heat, it was wrong for me to take advantage of her. She wasn't thinking straight, I gave her hope and took it from her when I left leaving her on a planet that feared her whole being. Maybe I wasn't such a good person I thought I was. Shabowinking that princess was a different thing, it was more of a political thing, her father insisted on it as well, and their culture was different from Earth's. Space Australia was Australia but in space. Maybe I just took her sex for granted? In my last life, I didn't have many sexual encounters and most were paid for, not one of them were emotionally involved. Maybe Jaika lied to me? I wasn't sure of it, maybe she was just lonely and wanted someone to live with her, maybe that was her way of expressing her wish of me staying with her on a planet that rejected her. I bumped my head into the ship's hard metal walls, women were troublesome, I couldn't get them at all, and I just realized I might not get with 18 either. This universe was too different. I wasn't sure what her personality would be. Guru and Popo weren't the same. New people I didn't know off popped everywhere. This was kind of frustrating, everything was going on all nice up till now. I guess I should think twice when a hot alien lady throws herself in my arms and says shaboink me. Whatever I promised Jaika I would get Jis to come back to Space Australia and I will do it. There was still a lot of time till the Namek Saga so I could train enough. I was still human in the end. I wasn't sure of many things and I could make mistakes so I got up from my sulky mood and continued my training. I would make it up for Jaika in the future. 18 was still an unknown factor. I will try to live a little more till I meet her. I continued my training and six more months gone by. Two more years till Raditz came. My power level was nearing 9 million and I couldn't improve my sword skills anymore as I had no sparring partners. I could now fully fuse my super mode with Godspeed and the full power technique without much strain. I still couldn't use it with Kaioken consistently though. I drifted in space as my spaceship was going around in random patterns. The spaceship speed was unrivaled and it could get from galaxy to galaxy in months I was currently in the West Galaxy. I was just touring the galaxy nothing big was happening currently everything was peaceful even though the cold empire monopolized most of the universe they didn't truly rule all of it. I made my way around different planets and fought different martial arts masters lowering my power level to match theirs to sharpen my skills. I fought different kind of races that used different type of martial arts that matched their body types. Some had liquid bodies, some gaseous bodies, some had four arms and focused on strength. Some focused on defense while other could redirect your attack with their body's force alone. Some martial arts weren't learnable due to the different physiques, but I could get some insights that would refine my skill from them. As I wandered the universe and beat a bit of the baddie here and there nothing else major happened, my power level didn't increase by a lot as I focused on refining my skills and I reached the power level of 10 million. There was only half a year left before Raditz was supposed to arrive at Earth, and somehow I found myself in the North Galaxy. I didn't control the direction the spaceship flew in, so I randomly found myself in different galaxies every time I finished one of my training sessions. I took some fruit yogurt out of the spaceship's fridge and ate it after a long training session cold yogurt was especially delicious. There wasn't much to do anymore till Raditz came, so I decided to wander the North Galaxy basically on foot. I put the spaceship in its capsule form, pocketed it, and started to fly around in space. I didn't fly randomly but more near star clusters that had key signatures. Even though I journeyed through a bunch of galaxies, I didn't visit every planet. I visited planets ranging from bug people to elves that had magical civilization and even monsters who were in the stone ages. 
Seeing such different communities and how other races lived their lives brought a qualitative change towards my mind and soul. It was also made me realize that I wasn't the most sociable guy ever, and that I didn't show as much emotion as I was supposed to. I didn't know what to think about that realization. I was just different. As I wandered the North Galaxy in the continuity of my spiritual journey, I found a habituated desert planet. This planet was special as its inhabitants believed in Buddhism. There were Buddha statues everywhere and everyone wore monk robes as they meditated. There were temples everywhere on the planet. I sat down under a Buddha statue and started to think. Was Buddha an actual god in the Dragon Ball universe as well? He never appeared in the anime even in Super where gods were appearing everywhere. There was a plaque under the Buddha statue that read in common language. Buddha exists in one heart. It's hard to cut off all ties to earthly needs to ascend to nirvana if you can't do it that's not the only way. Buddha is benevolent and gives many ways. Find your way inside your heart. Don't follow the words of others as they would murk your mind and way. Follow yourself and you will be enlightened. I contemplated the words, but this mantra was so profound that even my soul couldn't understand it thoroughly. It was a different type of technique that I couldn't understand yet. It took me two months to wander around the galaxy, and two more months I just stood here to understand the mantra. There were only two months left before Raditz came to Earth. I wasn't in a hurry Goku would be able to beat him in a jiffy. I decided to continue my wandering around the universe. I made sure to stir off the cold family planets. I didn't need to meet Frisia yet. I didn't know those men were coolers and who cooler truly was till it was too late. Now, things could be avoidable. I wasn't sure if Frisia was stronger than the original, so I didn't want to meet him yet. Wandering around the universe to see its wonders was beautiful. This was my holiday before the android saga would come. Two more months went by, and it was time to go back to Earth. Wandering Universe 7 was interesting. It helped me calm myself both spiritually and physically. After I realized how much of a jerk I was, I put two fingers on my forehead and concentrated. It was time to go back home. I found Kami's energy and teleported. I was back on the lookout. I stood on the white porcelain tiles of the lookout and breathed in the cold air of the high altitude of the lookout. Mr. Popo was looking at me like a hawk would look at a hare, but he didn't dare to take action. He realized he couldn't see through me anymore at all. It was like I was a black hole with no end. Kami came from outside the palace and looked at me with wonder in his eyes as he exclaimed, Your adventure in the outer space changed you a lot, young Krillin. It seems there's a different aura about you. Your sin also seems to have become non-existent. It seemed when Kami first met me he found a little aura of evil around me. I guess the dark aura from before could be explained from this. I nodded towards Kami and told him a few of my adventures before I left towards Capsule Corporation. As I extended my key senses to envelop all the planets, I rose my eyebrows in contemplation and surprise. It seemed the general power level of the planet increased from 5 to 10 to 25 and 50. The mortal level of the planet increased by quite a lot for some reason. I flew towards the Capsule Corp building and rang the bell. Out of the building came Bulma's mother, and she ushered me in, recognizing me as one of Bulma's friends. Bulma met with me and started to tell me about the changes that happened during the four years I was away. Your invention truly increased the popularity of martial arts, you know? These people are naturally competitive, and when they saw how could they count their power in numbers and see how truly strong they were, a lot of them started to train and compare with each other. I nodded my head it was human nature to want better things, better jobs, better lives, and now to be physically better than one another. It was a normal thing, the spark that created this phenomenon was the scouters I gave them. I asked her about the gravity chamber and ship, and she smiled, it seemed she could make it, albeit it couldn't go beyond 20 times from what she told me. I got outside and looked towards the gravity chamber installed in the courtyard. It was occupied by quite a bit of people, it was Tien, Kaiatsu, Rashi, Yamchur, Goku, and even Chi Chi was inside. Outside the chamber I could see a little kid waiting, he had a red, yellow, and green gown and a hat with a four-star dragon ball on his head. 
It was Gohan. I approached him and made sure my face was in the most cordial expression it could do and asked him, Who's this little guy here? Gohan was startled as he didn't sense my approach, but he calmed down as he saw me coming in with Bulma. He bowed towards me and said, My name's Gohan Mister. So polite just like in the anime, it seemed even though Chi Chi wanted to train as well in this timeline, she didn't make Gohan train yet. Out of the chamber came out all of my friends and they all started to smile when they saw me chatting with Gohan. Goku and Rashi came forward and gave me a big hug while the others nodded at me. I could sense their power level increased by quite a lot with the help of the gravity chamber. Goku's was already at 11,000. Rashi's was at 8,000. Kaiatsu at 5,000. Yamcha at 6,000 and Tien at 7,500. They all grew stronger and I could see that they could use the Kaioken up to times three, albeit with damage to their bodies. Hell, even Chi Chi reached almost 2000. I took a better look at Bulma and her power level was around 600 as well. It seemed everyone trained after I left. I asked Goku about Gohan and he told me that it was his son as he continued. This little guy here, I don't know what to say. I can feel quite the high amount of power locked in him. But Chi Chi told me that we would have to wait a few more years so that it wouldn't stun his growth. I nodded my head. Chi Chi's worries were unfounded, but it was normal for a human with no knowledge of scion biology to think like that. They all wanted for us to go to Kame House and make a huge party as my welcome back gift. I smiled towards them and said, You guys go ahead. I have something to do in the city and I will come back to Kame House shortly. I made sure to check on my bank account before I left the city and my mouth hanged open at the number. It was so high that I could feed Beerus till he became fatter than his brother and still live a life of comfort after for 10,000 years. It seemed people liked the scouters so much they bought them en masse. Some of them even crushed them with their palms and acted in a Chuyuni way to make themselves look badass in front of others. Like, OH look at that guy's power it is so high. Crack crunch and they destroyed their scouters and bought new ones. This increased the scouter sales by 300%. I decided to buy a house in the city so I could have my base on Earth. I didn't need to live with that perverted old man, and I could visit him whenever I wanted. The house came with furnishing and everything else that was needed. It was a bit near Capsule Corporation so it was quite expensive but it was practically a drop in the ocean for my account. I decided to fly towards Came House, there was no rush and I could let them prepare the party better. After a few minutes of flying I reached Came House and everyone had party hats on and a giant cake was there. Everyone was here launch, Oolong and Poor included. Even Piccolo was here. He looked at me with a begrudging expression like he didn't want to be here but Goku put an arm above his shoulders and dragged him into the party. Outside the atmosphere, a white sphere-shaped spaceship was making its way towards the Earth its inhabitant not knowing what was going to happen to him after he landed on this planet. His spaceship landed in a nearby farm's land plot and made a giant crater a fat middle-aged man who was working nearby took his trusty shotgun from the back of his truck and made his way to see what happened. A tall stranger with a big mane of unruly hair made his way out of the spaceship and clucked his tongue as he pressed the green scouter that presided over his left eye. Ding 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 the man gasped and said, the average power level of this planet increased by more than five? Are the reports wrong? As he tried to scan for the highest power level, the man with the shotgun made his way nearby and said, What are you doing on my land? I'm gonna shoot get the hell out. But the stranger ignored him, and he shot at him. Unfortunately for the poor farmer Raditz redirected the bullet, and it shot him in the stomach, his life and death unknown. Raditz clicked on the scouter again as he started to search for the highest power level on the planet, and he gasped as the number of 11,000 appeared on his scouter, and he muttered under his voice, Is this damn thing broken? It can't be this power level is almost nearing Prince Vegeta's. It's even above Nappa's. Maybe the scouter is broken, and it's 1,100. He started flying quickly towards the coordinates of the power, and he reached came house, we were all in the middle of the party so the stranger that came out of nowhere kinda killed our buzz. 
Everyone looked with narrowed eyes as they sensed the power level of the surrounding stranger. I knew who he was, and I shook my head. Poor thing he was as strong as in the original. Is this the curse of Raditz? Even in an alternate universe, he can't be stronger than 1000 power level? He flew down, landed on the island and chuckled while looking towards Goku and saying, So Kakarot, you didn't do your mission, huh? Goku muttered to himself and told Raditz. So Kakarot was my original name? Well, whatever now I'm Goku and I grew up here on Earth. So it doesn't matter if I had to exterminate this planet's inhabitant or not. Goku still remembered that when I taught him the fake moon technique, I also gave him tidbits of Scion history so he knew what the mission was about. Raditz sneered and said, You grew pretty strong on this backward planet, even being a bit stronger than myself, but you are still not even able to touch Nappa's or the Prince's shoes. It would be better if you and your friends would just give up this planet. Goku was ready to show Raditz how wrong he was. But Chi-Chi interrupted him and said, Darling, it's just a weakling. Why don't I handle him and let you do whatever you want with him later? Since it seems he is of your race? Goku nodded and said, Okay then Chi-Chi. All the training you did with us made you quite strong, so you can handle this guy easily. Raditz sneered at their words and he was ready to attack but Chi-Chi appeared in front of him and sent a roundhouse kick towards his chest. Raditz didn't even see how she did it. She was practically a blur to his eyes since her power level was double his. And he had no techniques. He was a low-class scion who didn't have access to the fake moon technique, so he couldn't even turn Oozuru if he wanted to. It was in the middle of the day, so there was no chance for a comeback. Chi-Chi beat the snot out of Raditz, his armor cracked, his scouter broken. He couldn't even call for backup, nor anyone could hear anything else besides initial conversation that happened between us. He laid down on the sand, his tail twitching and his wild mane of hair full of sand. He started to cry and beg. Kakarot, I'm your big brother, please take your woman off me. She is a devil, please. Stop her. I'm going to be good. I'm going to join you. Just stop her. It seemed Chi-Chi gave Raditz PTSD already. Goku motioned with his hand and Chi-Chi stopped abusing Raditz's body. And he asked him, So you are my brother? What about the rest of the family? I'm not sure about what happened to our race, but I heard we are pretty much extinct. Raditz got up from the ground hastily as he trembled from the pain and his injuries while he explained, Well brother, our home planet was supposedly hit by an asteroid and only very few of us survived the ones who were sent on missions at the time, the only confirmed alive scions, are you me the prince and the imperial advisor Nappa. Goku nodded his head, he finally found some of his original family, and he seemed he didn't want to kill Raditz, he could be redeemed just like Piccolo was, and he was sure he could keep him in check with his higher power level even if he decided to train him, I was there anyway, and I didn't show my true power level yet to everyone else, all they could feel was mind-numbing energy from me so they didn't ask. Goku gave Raditz a Senza bean, and he ate it not knowing what it was supposed to do. But after all the damage he took from Chi-Chi healed up and his power level increased by 300, he started to flatter Goku and said, Wow brother, you have such magical things. They are way better than the healing chambers of the Frisia Force. Bulma perked up at the mention of healing chambers and dragged Raditz towards her, so he could explain to him what it was all about. After hearing about the wonders of the chambers Bulma immediately started to draw some schematics basically out of God knows where. Raditz was scared of Chi-Chi and the others as he realized that the scouter didn't malfunction. Outside the planet and the Milky Way galaxy in far far away place. A short guy with a blue and white armor who wore white gloves on his hands and had a red scouter stood on the body of an insect humanoid as he ate his remains. Nearby a buff bald man with a mustache and no armor wearing only underwear was sunbathing while also eating some bug remains as he said. Evagita it seemed Raditz's connection with his scouter was cut out, should we go after him? Vegeta sneered and said. Let's see where that fool lost his connection on, oh? Planet Earth, wasn't Raditz supposed to get his little brother from there? Do you think his brother became stronger and beat him to the ground? Nappa chuckled and said, The probability of that happening is quite high. Isn't that right, Vegeta? Vegeta chuckled and said, Yeah, alright, 
That Buffon could have gotten his butt beat from his little brother from what we know about him. Let's go to Earth and recruit this cockroach since the fodder Raditz is probably dead. Raditz suddenly sneezed on Earth as he was handed a piece of the giant cake. Poor told him bless you and Raditz nodded his head at the little cat. He had a feeling like someone was cursing him. I observed Raditz thoroughly to make sure he had no other intentions, but it seemed he was cowed by the power levels that were way above his. Even Piccolo's reached almost 6,000, and he didn't even train in the gravity chamber due to his stubbornness from what I heard. I guess that's why Kami had such a rudy complexion when I met him. Now that Raditz has been cowed with no action on my part, it was time for some relaxation for me till Nappa and Vegeta came two years later. I could even make a dojo on this planet and spread my techniques so I could increase its mortal level. It could make Beerus happy and give him no reason to even think of destroying the planet. Beerus spared the planet in the original because of Goku, but I think he spared it more because he was a glutton who loved Earth's food. It was time to make a dojo and spread my techniques on this planet. Maybe I would try to do it in the whole universe. In the future we would be excluded out of the chance of being erased if our mortal level was high enough. After the party ended and everyone made their way back to their own homes I decided that I would put my plans in motion. I bought a large plot of land near the city and used my money to create a huge dojo with all the normal training equipment and something extra that I created using my materialization skill. It took no more than three days to finish everything, and I even added ads on television, on billboards everywhere. When people heard that an ex-Budokai Tenkechi World Tournament winner opened up his dojo, and they could learn from him all of them came towards it like a moth would be drawn towards a flame. There were thousands of people waiting outside the dojo clamoring and pushing each other wanting to enter. I made my way outside behind me was Raditz. He would be an instructor in the dojo, he had to earn his bread somewhere, he couldn't be lazy. He could teach people normal key techniques and how to fly. It was good enough for these humans who thought that flying was a myth, and they could never do it with their bodies. I officially opened up the dojo and everyone entered. It was much more spacious than what the outside would indicate. It was full of training machines, weighted clothing that could be used and taken away if they had a subscription, and special new healing chambers supplied by Capsule Corporation. Bulma wanted to test out the healing chambers at my dojo, I already knew of their effectiveness so I agreed we also had gravity machines but those would be for later. Many people came from around the world to train in my, and there was even that Indian guy from before who got beaten up during the first Budokai tournament we joined, his name was Nam. I motioned towards him and he bowed, his power level increased to 100, and it seemed he knew how to use key but not that well. I could make him my second instructor after I trained him a bit. I told him a special mantra to train his body and mind and put him on his way. I told him to report to me his progress every day. I got up on a podium specially made for this occasion and sat cross-legged on a pillow up on the podium. Everyone looked at me strangely, but I coughed a bit and said, from here I will teach you a special mantra that you will all train in diligently every day so you would become stronger. You will be able to train your body while you chant this mantra at the same time to increase your training speed, but not everyone will be able to endure it. I will say it only once so remember it well. As I started to impart the mantra, everyone took a serious look in their eyes as they started to decipher it. Not everyone was talented in martial arts, but some people could recall the whole mantra from the first time they heard it. These people with friends who didn't understand it from the first time would explain it so everyone could train with it. It seemed this batch of people weren't greedy and wanted their friends to grow with them instead of letting them down. I nodded my head, this was a good mentality for the humans to have. I left letting Raditz take care of the menial questions while I entered in deep meditation in my room. I learned how to refine my ki and increase its quality with mediation while also purifying it into a higher being of ki. It was pure gold and gave a soothing feeling, it was just like my Buddha stand transformed ki, but purer and truer. Right now not even 1% of all my ki was transformed, and it would take me years and years of purifying it to reach perfection. But I could feel that it would bring a qualitative change to my whole body and spirit when it would be done. After a round of meditation I decided to leave the dojo. I lent Raditz the keys so he could close up when it was time and gave him his first month's pay in advance. He had to pay for his meals while he stayed with Goku. 
I decided that next day I will have to inform everyone of the next threat that was the two scions. Raditz didn't say they would come. I guess he thought there was nothing of importance on Earth that would warrant their attention. But them thinking that Raditz was dead, they would surely want to put their hands on one of the last remaining scions that was stronger than Raditz, which was Goku. I got everyone to make their way towards Kami's lookout and told them with a serious look on my face. Two years from now, two more scions will come, and they are way stronger than Raditz. One can be beaten by all of you while the other would need you to give your best to beat him. I won't interfere in the fightings, so I decided for Goku to train in a special place, while you will up your training here with Mr. Popo. Mr. Popo as if summoned came out of nowhere and shouted, Maggots! Time for another bout of training! Everyone shivered Goku included, but I grabbed his shoulder and put two fingers to my forehead. King Kai did need a second student and some humanoid company now and then. I could teach him the Kaioken, but where was the fun in that? I left Goku with King Kai after I explained everything to him. King Kai smiled towards me with a proud look on his face and said, I got lots of favor and praise from Supreme Kai. The other Kais were very jealous. They all thought Aatrox would escape into the mortal realm. But your timely intervention granted me lots of faces. I could do this favor and teach this lad here the Kaioken and Spirit Bomb. I nodded my head at King Kai and left them with their own devices while I teleported myself back on the lookout and said, I will supervise your training with Mr. Popo for a while, but now I want you to tell me if you mastered the techniques that I taught you last time. Kairatsu immediately sprung his hand up and said, Krillin I can already lift the whole lookout with my mind if I want to. I took all the training you told me to do seriously. I looked towards the little guy and Kaiatsu immediately made the lookout fly higher and higher in the sky. We were almost out of the stratosphere, I motioned towards him, and he put the lookout back down even though his power level wasn't high his mental powers were impressive. Tien's third eye started glowing as his power level multiplied by five times, but he immediately gave up using it, it took too much of a burden on his key and body to increase his power level by five times. He could use the Kaioken up to three times maximum with his current power level, so obviously he couldn't increase it to five times with his racial skill. A blurry image appeared behind Tien after that. It looked like a green triangle with a single eye in it. I didn't recognize it at first as it was too blurry, but when I took a better look it was the Illuminati symbol. His power level would increase to eight times when he truly mastered this technique. Yamcha came up as well, I already knew about the Kaioken, so I wanted him to show me his stand. A blurry wolfman image with a star between his eyes appeared behind Yamcha, but it stopped almost immediately as he started to huff, he was weaker than Tien, and it seems he didn't put his all in training his stand either. I nodded my head towards them and said, From now on you will train to become twice as strong as Goku, and master your stands. I also want you to be able to reach at least Kaioken times 5, and Tien you should be able to use your racial skill perfectly. They all nodded their heads at me as Raditz approached me as well and asked me what did I want from him. I smiled and told him. For you, I can teach you the fake moon technique. Vegeta knows it already doesn't he? Raditz gasped at my knowledge and asked me. How do you know about Vegeta and the fake moon technique? I told him how I realized it by how he called him Prince and how the higher echelons of the science could get their hands on the technique. I also told him how I learned it from some scattered remnants in space while I was traveling. Raditz bought it thinking that I found pieces of planet Vegeta flying in space. I let them all experience Popo's training once again but now intensified and improved. They also had to concentrate on mastering their techniques as well. I left for King Kai's planet as I forgot to ask Goku about his progress on the Akari mode. Goku was already wearing King Kai's special weighted GI while he was in the forms of starting the training for the Kaioken. He smiled towards me his silly goofy smile and asked why I was back so soon. I just got straight to the subject. How's your progress on the fake moon technique? Goku smirked and showed me his hand as he put key in his hand a little white ball came out of his hand. I nodded my head towards his showcase of the technique and he dispelled it. How about the other technique? Goku's smile turned into an awkward one and he scratched the back of his head and said, Oh well. You see I couldn't truly master it. I could make a great ape image appear behind my back. But the power level didn't increase as much as 10. I need to practice it more. 
I made him show me how he initiated the technique and I found quite a bit of flaws on how he executed it and pointed them out to him. His power level increased to six times after he fixed all his mistakes. It seemed his comprehension didn't reach the needed realm to touch upon the Ikari mode yet. While Goku was a genius, he wasn't much compared to Broly. But Broly was a freak of nature who had more plot armor than ten Gokus combined. I bid farewell to them afterward and made my way back to the dojo, as I let only Nam man it today, and he needed me to be there as well. I needed at least two competent instructors in the dojo. Something clicked. Chi Chi could be an instructor here as well. It solves their money problem and with her higher power level her cooking prowess increased by quite a lot. She could whip up food extremely fast from what Raditz told me some days ago. I flew towards her and Goku's house on Mount Paozu, and she opened up the door. Gohan was behind her he had a bunch of cookies in his hands and he ate them like a chipmunk. His puffed up face was pretty cute. I immediately cut the chit chat and told her about my proposition. She started to ponder on it for some time before she agreed. She asked me about everything, retirement plans, salary, if I gave out good health insurance. I sweat dropped at the questions but answered all of them truthfully. She seemed she liked my answers as she wanted to start teaching at the dojo straight away. She said that she wanted to take Gohan with her to the job and I agreed. He would start training next year as well so it mattered if he started to get exposed to martial arts directly earlier. He was one of the characters with the strongest potentials just below Frisia and Broly's. My power level also increased to 10 million and 500,000. I also stabilized the combination of my techniques and I could use the super mode with my full power technique Godspeed and Kaioken up to times 3 with a bit of effort. While my power level didn't increase by much my techniques got a bit more refined during my stay on Earth. I could feel the key of every inhabitant of the planet increase daily by small numbers. Slowly and surely the planet was getting stronger as a whole. Ki was internal and not breathed in from the universe planets would benefit if the population was strong. The planets would get infused with Ki from the population as the environment would grow stronger and more hospitable for intelligent life forms. Right now the damage that was done to Earth due to pollution and irresponsible wars was slowly but surely getting reverted. Earth as a whole was getting stronger every day, itself as well as its inhabitants. After feeling the changes all around the planet, I could surely say that I was getting in the right direction with everything, considering Earth's well-being. Maybe I should let all of the Scions know the truth about their planet when they would reunite with each other. I would make sure Vegeta and Nappa knew their place. Yes, Scions were battle-thirsty warmongers who did kill the Truffles to take their planet, but their potential was extremely great and they could be redeemed. Vegeta became the kind of loving father in Dragon Ball Super, and he cleansed away all his prior sins by saving the universe with Goku a couple of times. Nappa was a blank slate for me, I knew jack shit of the guy, he was big mean and ruthless from what I saw from the anime when he fought the Z fighters, he disarmed Tien and wanted to kill Gohan, if it wasn't for Piccolo's interference at the end Gohan would have become space dust. There were only six more months left before Nappa and Vegeta landed on Earth, Somewhere in the galaxy two pods were flying near each other. Out of one of them came the voice of Nappa who asked continuously, Vegeta, are we there yet? Vegeta responded, No, and it went so on, so forth till they would reach Earth. I think both of them would be convinced just like Raditz, Goku should already have reached the power level of 40,000 by now, and he should be able to use the Kaioken well enough anyway. Even the human Z fighters would be able to beat them by now, Mr. Popo's training was scarily effective for some reason on them. I think even Kaiatsu would be able to transform Nappa into a pancake on the ground with his mental power by now. He might not be able to beat Vegeta with it, but Nappa would be a goner. I could feel their powers increasing every day as they trained, they even mastered their stands, but they still couldn't combine them with the Kaioken, their bodies were too frail even though Popo whipped them into shape by torturing them. Um, I mean training them thoroughly every day without rest, he even mass-fed them Senza beans, which now were in abundance due to Yajirobe not stuffing his face full of them every 10 seconds. Corin also told me when I last visited that the more beans there were, the faster the newly planted ones would grow. He said that the old ones' magical waves would influence the newly planted ones and accelerate their growth. I decided before the six months were up to thoroughly train my mental power and magic. 
as I kind of let them down these years in favor of training my ki and martial arts. I continuously trained my mental power until something clicked inside of me. I could now create a mental domain inside my soul in which I could fight imaginary opponents to perfect my techniques. It wouldn't increase my power level but here I could train as I would in the hyperbolic time chamber. Even though the increase wasn't as high as one year into one day. It was 10 days in one day. It was practically the perfect technique training place. I decided to enter into closed door training for the time being. I let the dojo in the hands of Chi Chi and Nam. Nam now having the power level of 250 he learned how to fly and project his aura, becoming a middle graded instructor, while Chi Chi was my best one with Raditz. But Raditz was also training on the lookout with the others, he mastered the fake moon technique and could barely control himself in his great ape form, his power level even increased to 7000. I sat cross-legged on my bed in my new house in North City. A few blocks away I could even see Bulma's house. Clearing my mind thoroughly I started to stop all distracting thoughts and enter into a limbo state. Nor alive nor dead. My breathing became so slow my heartbeat was almost nil. But if you would put your hand on my chest you would still feel a weak bump bump. I entered my mindscape and there was nothing there. As I just unlocked it nothing appeared in it till I willed it. The best way to train your techniques is in the battlefield. So I decided to create one. All around me countless dead bodies appeared. Some impaled, some decapitated or eviscerated. Flags appeared around some of the bodies depicting a red and black symbol with words that read in a special runic tongue that meant Noxus. Out of the pile of bodies a giant of a man with an axe as big as him appeared. He had an iron jaw and a furnace embedded in his stomach. He was bald and he wore armor, his skin. Was sickly gray like an undead as he shouted with a low voice, Charge for Noxus! He started to bum rush me just like a bull would do. A red aura started to encase him due to his speed and he became a blur. His charge was linear so I easily dodged it. I created this mindscape to train my mind in magic so I didn't try to fight the giant head on. I created a barrier around him with my magic and stopped his charge. The barrier started to shake and it almost broke as cracks appeared around it but it held fast. The giant started to roar as sound waves appeared out of his mouth which destroyed the barrier completely. A red aura encased him like a shield as he took his axe and slammed it into the ground. A giant shockwave traveled towards me and I used my magic to negate the damage by defusing the shockwave. I created a small invisible barrier around me which stopped all of the remaining shockwaves. After that I used my magic before the giant could continue harassing me with any other attack. I stopped all of his movement with special magic chains and ran him through with a magically blessed key spear. Magic was a support technique that could enhance the power of key. I could even create symbols that I could use to give a burst of power towards other people. I could even heal them like a senza bean would do, albeit it wouldn't truly restore all of their stamina. Magic had tons of possibilities, as I pondered the giant stopped struggling and died. But suddenly his furnace on his stomach started to grow to life. His eyes became fully red as he shouted, destroyed his bindings and rushed towards me. I dodged his attempts of him trying to grab my throat and sap me of my vitality with his hands. It seemed his death gave him the ability to life steal and increased his speed by quite a bit. After a few seconds, he decomposed and became a pile of ash. Without any vitality being stolen, the furnace couldn't keep him alive. A dog tag was within the ashes that read, Shown everything disappeared as this one session of training was done. By the outside time three days passed, which meant thirty days passed inside the mindscape. I could now control my magic better and my mind strengthened itself by quite a bit as well. Only three days passed and there was still quite a lot of time before the science came so I could continue my training. I appeared somewhere else now, it was a rural planet I visited once in the South Galaxy. It had a medieval Asian feel. Some lanterns with four red lines were hung around the trees and houses. Out of nowhere, a sniper shot was directed towards my forehead. I dodged it by moving my head a few centimeters to the right. It was a special magic enchanted bullet. As it skewered a person behind me the illusion of flowers appeared as his brain matter eyeballs and everything else was incinerated. 
The bullet was made so while it gained great penetrative force, it also added the illusion to add a great execution towards its target. Out of a nearby tree, a masked man who wore an outfit made from snakeskin steel boots and a steel arm guard held his sniper rifle as he took aim again and said, Dance puppet, we shall make a great show. His aim was impeccable but with my magic, I could stop the bullets from midair. He looked shocked at my capabilities and started to run. While his figure was frail his speed was extremely quick. I started to follow him but I stepped on something that looked to be a lotus trap. Caught my leg. But I immediately destroyed it by putting a bit of pressure on it. The man tried to aim at me again. But when he saw that his trap did nothing, he started to run away again. This man gave me quite a good idea of how to use my magic so... I created a key rifle and infused it with magic. I took aim at his back and shot him with a magically enhanced bullet. It was enhanced for speed only so it hit him in the back and he fell. I made my way towards him and took off his mask but nothing appeared under it. It was blank. I swear I saw some eyeballs when he aimed at me back then. Everything dissolved around me. I was back in my blank mindscape. Seven more days had passed. Thus ten days passed outside and 60 inside the mindscape. Time flowed differently even though it felt like I fought for minutes in real time outside, it was one day. I willed myself to get out of the mindscape and I was outside again, closed door training was a success. All of my bodily functions regained their normal parameters as I got outside my house to smell the air outside. It felt like there was a qualitative change towards my magic comprehension. Only very few people knew how to use magic properly in this world. But with the help of my mindscape and some memories from the past life, I could create more unique ways to use magic. Key guns enchanted by magic would look cool but weren't useful in this world. But I could enchant the beams to give them special properties. Combined with elemental key, I could even challenge people with higher power levels than me now. As everyone continued training, it was almost two more months till the science came. But out of outer space earlier than intended came two rotund spaceships out of one sounded. Vegeta, are we there yet? The other voice just sighed and answered in an annoyed fashion. Yes, we are here, Nappa. Both crashed into one of the cities and Nappa said, Sweet, Vegeta time to find that cockroach, shall we? I immediately teleported near them and said, Gentlemen, I will take you to cockroach immediately, but you are scaring the normal population. If you will stop, it would be appreciated. My towering figure, dark clothes, and gold aura made a strange combination in both of their eyes. They couldn't sense key. So Nappa decided to use his scouter, which immediately exploded when it pointed at me. Nappa started to stutter immediately. Uh, great earth protector, we, uh, are here for someone of our race, and, uh, Vegeta growled at Nappa and said, Stop making a fool out of yourself, Nappa. Even if he is strong, you don't need to embarrass us. It seems he means no ill will, and he knows where Kakarot is. I nodded towards Vegeta, as always the prince was pretty smart and knew his place. That's how he survived for so many years in the Frisia Force. Then only later, when he inflated himself with the thought that he became the legendary Super Scion, he started acting dumbly. If he acted like that from the start... He would have become space dust at Frisia's hand on the first day of work. I motioned towards a nearby wasteland and made them wait there. It was time for the Z-Fighters to meet the Scions. I made sure to get Goku from King Kai planets too. After a few minutes everyone was gathered. We made our way towards the wasteland. The group included Tien, Yamcha, Raditz, Goku, Rashi, Kaiatsu. Everyone was at its best. Tien reached a power level of 22,000, Yamchu a power level of 18,000, and Rashi a power level of 25,000. I taught him the stand technique, and he made a turtle stand that increased his power level by 9 times. He was way more experienced due to his old age, and he could create the stand faster than the others. Goku's power level breached 50,000, and Raditz reached 11,000 when Vegeta pointed his scouter at Raditz and saw 11,000. He clicked it again to make sure it was right. When he reached Goku, he had the longest face you could see around. When he noticed Goku still had his tail too, he knew. He couldn't beat him, so he scoffed and said, 
We are here to take Kakarot back with us due to Frisia's orders since Raditz is alive too, he needs to come with us too. I interjected and said, No, I don't think they will. Vegeta gritted his teeth he knew he could do nothing here, and he hated the feeling of being powerless his power level was just around 18,000 and Nappa's was almost around 6,000. Even in their great ape forms they wouldn't be able to defeat Goku as he could transform as well. I broke the silence and said, Do you guys truly know why your planet was destroyed? Vegeta and Nappa scoffed and said, An asteroid hit it? We already know why would you bring this up? I chuckled at their words and said, Wrong. Where did you hear this information? Nappa said while suddenly realizing, Lord Frisia told us. But, God admit that lizard mother schmucker did it. An asteroid hit at my rear. Nappa immediately started cursing Frisia. Vegeta turned his scouter off the moment he saw Nappa's expression. That was his cursing expression. I nodded my head. They both realized who destroyed their planet. They weren't that dumb. I gave them something to strive for right now. We have special training areas and techniques here on Earth. As long as you don't do anything to the planet or its inhabitants you can try to train here with Goku and Raditz. Raditz already accepted. Vegeta's pride was high and he didn't want the help of some earthlings. But Nappa's pride wasn't that high so he immediately accepted. Vegeta is the only one left out accepted as well with gritted teeth. I took all of them to the lookout so they could train there. Gravity chambers already upgraded up to 100 times there. Bulma was waiting there with the chambers and healing pods. Mr. Popo glared at her. She invaded the sanctity of his lookout. He was ready to devour her, but we suddenly all appeared due to my instant transmission. Mr. Popo immediately hinged his jaw back on, and he showed his normal smile. Bulma unknowingly didn't realize what Popo was about to do behind her back. When her eyes laid on Vegeta, he immediately got towards him with basically what I could say be hearts in her eyes. Vegeta scoffed at the earthling woman, but she wasn't truly a weakling. He could see he was stronger than an average normal Frisia soldier. Frisia cannon fodder soldiers' power levels were around 100 to 500. The prince didn't know how to smile, so he didn't reciprocate her greeting. He just sneered and asked me about the special training. I told him about the gravity chambers and who their creator was. I indicated to him that he should talk to Bulma for a better experience. His eyes also narrowed when he saw the healing pods. He wasn't sure how we got our hands on technology like Frisia's. That guy was supposed to have a monopoly on it. Suddenly out of outer space a voice appeared in my head. It wasn't King Kai. It was Super Kami Guru. Earthling you used our Dragon Balls and I unlocked your potential. It's time for you to repay us. Super Kami Guru decreed so. I sweat dropped I would have helped them anyway even if he didn't say that it seemed Frisia still heard about the rumors of the Dragon Balls and he tried his hand to take them. In the original, the rumors got confirmed by Vegeta due to the leak of the bugged scouters. But now, even though he didn't get a confirmation, his thirst for immortality made him take a bit out of his time to take a trip to Namek. Super Kami Guru continued in my head. I sense a great evil will make its way towards Namek in a few months. Take your butt and whoever else butts out here and save the goddamn planet. After that the connection was cut off. Guru seemed a bit pissed off there, didn't he? On Namek Guru was observing a bird as he shouted outside, Nail... I saw a bird outside. Nail sighed and said, Yes, Lord Super Kami Guru. Guru continued, It was pretty. Nail just said yes again. An evil smile suddenly appeared on Guru's face as he said in a low tone, Go and kick its butt. I informed the others of Namek's plight of help and everyone wanted to help. Vegeta and Nappa didn't truly want to. But I told them I will take the gravity chambers and healing pods with me to Namek so they agreed to come in the end. They didn't know Frisia was on its way there. I made sure not to tell them it would be a surprise. I was in for a surprise myself too. In Frisia's spaceship, Frisia was in his levitating chair as he made his way to Namek. Suddenly another spaceship similar to his flew towards his spaceship and Cooler made his way inside. 
Cooler started grinning and said, Chasing after urban legends, little brother? Frisia scoffed an annoyed expression appearing on his face. He truly hated his big brother of his with passion. What do you want, Cooler? It's not the time for the family yearly reunion, is it? Cooler just chuckled and said, Oh no, no. I just wanted to follow you on your urban legends chase. Maybe if these things existed we could both become immortal? Frisia wanted Cooler to be the last person who gained immortality. But he couldn't say no, as a finger was already pointed to his head. A purple death beam ready to shoot trough. And Cooler coldly continued without a hint of mercy or familial love. And I wasn't asking for your opinion on it. Little bro, Cooler was just too cool for Frieza. We all teleported on Namek with the use of my instant transmission. I even invited Piccolo by telling him we were going to his home planet. As we made our way around the Namekian villages we met with Nail at Guru's house. Piccolo nodded at Nail and Nail nodded at Piccolo. The Namekian body language was extremely simple, especially with people of the warrior clan. Piccolo was happy to be on his home planet. He split off our group and went sightseeing it. We installed the training rooms near Guru's house as I materialized a platform that could sustain everything. It was time for some hardcore training. I wouldn't interfere with Frisia, I will let them fight with him. Frisia was just too weak and all of them needed some life and death fights to stimulate their potential. If they were almost near death I would save them, but there was a very low chance for that to happen, at least against Frisia that is. I turned the gravity up to 100 and made everyone come in, they immediately sagged down like a bunch of potato sacks, they couldn't move properly at all the gravity was too much for them, Goku included. He trained to the maximum of 20 times gravity before. Nappa and Vegeta were in the other chamber training at 30 times. After they got used to it, I will make them train with all of us here. I let their bodies get used to gravity and used my magic healing to heal their bones and muscles, facilitating an increase in power level to Goku and letting the humans get used to gravity better. I also helped Nappa and Vegeta out with my healing magic and after that put them directly inside 100 gravity. Both of their power levels increased every time they healed from damage as they were Scions. The damage wasn't life-threatening though so the increase wasn't very high. But they could train in 100 times gravity normally now. I decided to take a page out of Popo's training book and said, All right maggots, it's time for some special fighting training. You will all come at me with everything you got and try to move me from my spot. My power level already touched 12 million and all of them were below 100,000. It was practically impossible to do that without any techniques. They all charged towards me in a formation trying to disorientate me. It was quite cute. It would have worked on anyone else with a weaker mind or key that was above 1 million power level so they could have put a good fight against second form Frisia. I let loose my key as I extended my arms, pushing them back. They tried to attack me again, it was obvious they had a hard time as they were sweating intensely. The gravity was taking a toll on their bodies, but I could feel their key increasing. I could not heal exhaustion but I could heal their torn muscles and broken bones. I continued to train them as a general from hell, and after two months of hellish training great results have been sprung. The Scions as always were the most impressive of the bunch. Goku reached the power level of 130,000. Vegeta reached the power level of 90,000. Nappa the power level of 70,000. Rashi's power level increased to 50,000. Tien's to 45,000. Yamcha's to 40,000. Raditz-Z to 35,000 and Kaiatsu's to 20,000. Piccolo also came back and joined us in the training reaching a power level of 49,000. It seemed his journey among his people made him want to protect the planet against the evil that was to come. He trained like crazy and his motivation made everyone else train like crazy as well. My power level didn't increase by much but teaching others makes you reflect upon oneself so my techniques improved by quite a bit. I was sure I would even be able to take Cooler out now if we fought again. Vegeta was grumbling, he didn't like taking what was he thinking was charity from me and the others. He could have trained on his own. But he realized that his power level wouldn't have spiked so much just by sparring with Nappa on a godforsaken planet. He also didn't like how the low-class clown Kakarot surpassed him in power. He was the prince, the super elite after he learned how to sense Ki, he immediately challenged Goku to a fight.
Kakarot, I'll show you what a true Scion elite can do. Goku smirked and said, I'm pumped for a fight with my fellow Scion as well Vegeta. Vegeta scoffed but didn't continue talking. He immediately started to charge his purple key. As it started to shake the whole planet Nail was watching and Super Kami Guru had his window open so he could spectate as well he was eating popcorn while saying, Nail get me more butter. Nail looked at Super Kami Guru with a puzzled look. What are you eating Lord Guru? Don't you remember that we can only drink water? And what's this butter you are talking about? Guru kept a straight face and said, About that drinking only water thing, it was a lie. We can eat as well. Why do you think I'm so fat? And so started the epic adventure of Nail's search for butter so Super Kami Guru could fully delectate himself with a creamy popcorn while watching sparring sessions. Back to the fight, Goku charged up his sky blue aura as well and started to clash with Vegeta. Their speeds were so fast the majority couldn't see them fight without using ki to enhance their eyes. I could see them normally, they were trading punches and kicks and Goku was always coming up as better in the exchange. It seemed Goku was going easy on Vegeta. As the fight continued, Vegeta realized that Goku was holding back and he shouted, Kakarot stop humiliating me by holding back. Give it your all. And Goku did so. He suddenly appeared in front of Vegeta, grabbed him by a leg and started spinning him around after a while of spinning. He let go of his leg and used the Kaioken to immediately appear at the destination Vegeta would have landed. He appeared under him and punched him in the back, grabbed him and threw him down in the water. I immediately took Vegeta back out of the water and healed him. When did Goku become so brutal? Vegeta started to cough up a bit of water as he felt his power level increasing. He reached 120,000. He was ready to fight with Goku again, but he remembered how his power spiked due to the Kaioken, and he settled down, this was his loss. Nappa immediately got towards Vegeta and helped him up. Vegeta scoffed and declined Nappa's hand by smacking it away. Nappa just grinned like a buffon and said, Vegeta you got your butt handed to you today. It was almost like seeing you mock fight with Frieza back then. Vegeta's face darkened, and he pointed two fingers towards Nappa. Nappa's face paled as he found himself with two tiny holes in his chest. Vegeta intentionally didn't aim at any vital areas and said, This is for speaking when you are out of line Imperial Advisor Nappa. Nappa coughed some blood and chuckled. I'll make sure to ask for your permission before speaking again, Prince. Vegeta laughed and said, Make sure to not make the same mistake again, understood? Nappa just nodded his bald head vigorously. I came near him and healed both of the holes in his chest. His power level spiking towards 75,000. Goku motioned towards me with a smile on his face. It seemed he wanted to show me something. Out of the corner of my eye I could see Bulma patting Vegeta on the back and consoling him. Vegeta seemed pretty grim but didn't refuse her pats. I followed Goku and entered the gravity chamber with him. Immediately his eyes turned feral and his power grew. His power level multiplied by ten times and an Ozuru image appeared behind him for a brief second. His smile turned wider as he waited for my comments. Good job, Goku. It seems you have mastered the Akari mode. Now you can use the power of the great ape form without the cumbersome increased body size. Goku nodded his head and he reverted his transformation. It's all due to your teachings, Krillin. You are so knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. Where did you even learn all of it? I chuckled and answered him truthfully. Well, for one I got some of my knowledge from my travels around the universe and the other. Well, I used the Dragon Balls to gather some needed information. Goku nodded his head. He wouldn't question anything that was involved with the Dragon Balls. He witnessed their prowess firsthand. After 20 more days, I could feel giant malevolent key and a smaller malevolent key approaching Namek. It seemed Cooler decided to butt in Frieza's gig this time around. I took everyone and entered Guru's house and said, Great Super Kami Guru, could you unlock everyone's potential so we would have a better chance to ward off the invaders? Super Kami Guru looked at us through his almost closed eyes and said, the one with the hippie troll hair and the bald one with the mustache gets no potential unlocked. Vegeta growled and said, 
We didn't need your so-called potential unlock anyway. Nappa let's wait outside. Nappa complied with Vegeta's wishes and walked outside with him, waiting for the others to get their potential unlocked. Kayatsu's power level increased to 70,000. Yamcha's to 120,000. Tien's to 170,000. Goku's to 1,500,000. Raditz-Z to 200,000 and Rashi's to 180,000. Vegeta growled outside as he sensed the new power levels. He was already at 150,000, while Nappa's breached 95,000. Everyone was ready for the incoming fight with the two tyrant Frost Lords. Frieza's giant spaceship entered the planet's atmosphere while coolers waited outside of it. They landed and the grunts made their way outside the spaceship, ready to unleash hell upon Namek's peaceful land. Unfortunately for them, we all made our way towards the spaceship and the grunts became space dust. Out of the spaceship, Frieza, Cooler, Dodoria, and Zarbin flew out. Cooler narrowed his eyes at my presence while Frieza looked puzzledly at Cooler then at me and asked, do you know this bald, noseless thing, brother? Cooler gritted his teeth and said, He is the one who injured me back then. Frisia gasped. He remembered how he made fun of Cooler some years ago because he came at the family reunion battered and took a beating from him because of that. Frisia knew there was no chance of interfering in my and Cooler's fight, so he glanced at the others and when he saw Vegeta he started smiling menacingly. So this is where you hid, Vegeta, you rat. It seemed my benevolence didn't stop you from trying to usurp me. Vegeta spat on the ground and growled. Benevolence? What benevolence? Killing my entire race and destroying my planet? That's what you call benevolence, Frisia. Frisia chuckled and said while seemingly reminiscing. Ah, yes. Those fireworks were quite sublime. Planet Vegeta made a great show before it became space dust. Vegeta... Nappa and Raditz gritted their teeth in anger. Goku looked solemnly towards Frieza as well. Even though he didn't know anything concrete about his race besides that they were space pirates, he still felt bad about their fate. I intercepted Cooler as I used five of my six dots increasing my power level to 384 million. Cooler immediately powered up to his maximum in his normal form, and we took the fight out of Namek's atmosphere. On the planet, Frieza remained and said, Dodoria, Zarbin you stay back. Their power levels are too high for you. Call the Jinyu force for reinforcements. I still need some grunts to gather the Dragon Balls after. Goku looked solemnly at Frieza as he started to charge his Kamehameha. Frieza immediately powered up towards his second form and charged forward. Vegeta was ready to kill both Dodoria and Zarbin. But before they both died at Vegeta's hands, they could still use their scouters to call for the Jinyu Force. Vegeta laughed and said, Killing Frieza's minions and his Jinyu Force will feel pretty well. Frieza growled towards Goku as he transformed in his third form and Goku used Kaioken times two to fight against him. In the atmosphere of planet Namek, I was confronting Cooler for the second time, and this time around I wasn't going to be the one who lost. I was staring down Cooler as he kept his guard up against me. He saw how some of my dots were shining on my forehead and he knew I was already above his power level a bit. He was already trying to go on his fifth form. Cooler said after we stared at each other for a while, Your survival intrigues me. It seems you can also survive in space as my clan can. Your lack of nose seems to explain you not needing oxygen though. I kept a serious face at his words. Goku could technically fight full power Frieza with a combination of Akari mode and Kaioken without the need of Super Scion. Hopefully, no one would die against Frieza. I trained all of them thoroughly to make sure nothing untoward would happen to them. Cooler shouted as his armor started to encase him and he bulked up. Veins appeared around him. He knew his energy consumption would increase by quite a lot, but he felt how I was stronger than before he decided to give his all from the start. All of my dots started shining as I buffed up using my full power technique. Our power levels now were similar both exceeding 1 billion. Cooler narrowed his red pupil-less eyes at me and started to charge at me. He threw a right hook at me which I parried and countered with a roundhouse kick. He took in full brunt with his arms defending his chest in an X position. He grunted and started to charge tiny death beams on his fingers which he quickly shot at me. 
I dodged by milliseconds while the death beam was fast and had great piercing power. It couldn't kill if it didn't hit a vital point. It was also easily parable. For example, when Goku was below Frieza's power level in his final form and he could parry it with his hand albeit with difficulty. I used my instant transmission to directly appear behind Cooler and ran him through with a concentrated revolving sphere of ki. His back immediately exploded as a huge tear appeared in it. He growled and used his tail to grab my hand and threw me away while he charged a purple giant beam and shot it at me. I cut the beam in half with a golden key scythe which I created hastily and buffed it up with my magic to increase its sharpness. Cooler was annoyed as he cauterized his back wound with a bit of key stopping its bleeding. He knew I still had some techniques that could increase my power level, but I didn't use them. The only chance for him to survive was to somehow be able to escape. He didn't care about Frisia. He would be glad if Frisia died here. He was jealous of his brother's high power level upon birth, and how his father viewed Frisia better than himself. I could sense several highish power levels make their way in space pods towards Namek. If my guess was right, it was the Jinyu Force. I telepathically told the people on Namek to make sure they didn't kill Jis or Birder. They could hurt them but not kill them. Vegeta grumbled down on Namek at my words he wasn't going to promise anything. Goku nodded to himself while he clashed with Frieza, while the others made sure to remember my explanation of Jis and Birder's features so they wouldn't kill them. While the two Jinyu members weren't to be killed the others were game though. Frieza immediately used his third form's superior speed to ditz Goku in the stomach and he started to fire death beams as fast as a machine gun from his finger. Goku either deflected or dodged them after he got struck by a few due to him being stunned from the stomach hit. He started to increase his Kaioken but Frieza didn't let him concentrate on the technique properly. Knowing that if he let the Scion increase his power level by too much would spell his doom, he immediately started to charge upon his final form his arms by his sides as his power level increased directly to 50% of his normal. Making him reach 60 million, Goku gasped as he stopped using Kaioken and directly used Akari mode increasing his power level to 15 million. He also used Kaioken times 4 to match Frieza's power level. Frieza couldn't sense Ki but he could sense the air of savagery around Goku as his hair started to spike up combined with the red aura that encased him now. He knew that the continuing fight won't be easy for him at all. Back with Cooler I started to use my golden key scythe to try to hack him into pieces he had his guard up against me knowing that I could increase my power level with a burst and kill him so he was ready to make a retreat and run away with his spaceship anytime. Spaceships had void traveling capabilities which would increase their speed by quite a lot. Even though it couldn't compare to my spaceship speed, his could travel from galaxy to galaxy in few months, while mine would take half as much time. I wasn't sure where the Colt's planet was and I wasn't sure of King Colt's full power either so I needed to make sure both Cooler and Frieza died here without alerting Cold about it if they made their way back and informed him of my power I would lose the surprise tactic I could use against him. Cooler couldn't be distracted by anything now as he dodged my attempts at hacking him in two with the scythe. He was fully concentrated on my figure and I smirked while I turned off the key scythe and put my hands near my face and shouted. Solar Flare! A blinding light engulfed Cooler's widened eyes as he screamed. You bastard! I will kill you and your whole family and planet! You monkey! How dare you! But it was too late for him, already blinded I charged my destructo disc and bifurcated him into two he gasped as he couldn't feel his lower body anymore. And I made sure he couldn't get it back as I destroyed it with a handful of key. Cooler was still alive, his species could even survive being cut into two. Their will was tenacious and so was their physique. Cooler growled as his eyesight restored and looked down at his non-existent lower part. I didn't know how his race multiplied. But now he didn't have a little friend anymore. It all became dust. Before Cooler could do anything else. I created a long golden sword which extended out of my fingers and impaled him through the head. His power level was halved as he wasn't a hole anymore. I nodded my head. Vegito spirit sword was a good technique which I added to my arsenal right now. Back on planet Namek, Goku and Frieza were interlocked in a deadly fight as the other continued to watch the fight. The Jinyu members' bodies were strewn here and there. 
The captain was laid down on Namex ground face up his body had a huge hole through the middle. It seemed he couldn't use his change technique to get anyone this time. Jeese and Berter were tied with key rope and were looking at everyone with fear in their eyes not knowing what their fate was. Jeese said in a trembling voice towards Berter, Mate, I think this is it for us. They might eat us alive now. We don't know for sure what these triclops, midget and science will do to us. It was an honor to fight alongside you in the mighty Jinyu force. Berter stuttered out and said, Well said Jeese. It seems I buffed my confidence up till now for nothing. I'm not the fastest in the universe. Jeese comforted him with words making him feel better. Vegeta scoffed at the duo's interaction. He was ready to kill both of them. But the human Yamcha stopped him. Their power levels were similar and Yamcha still had the stand and Kaioken technique under his belt. Vegeta was humiliated at the thought of the Earthlings becoming stronger than him. But he remembered that I was an Earthling as well and didn't say anything anymore. From the reports, he got when he first came to Earth he was sure it said that Earthlings had dirt low potential for fighting. But it seemed whoever made those reports was retarded. A Puel sneezed in a faraway Frisia planet. He survived this ordeal by his post being changed at the last second. Not going to Namek. I stood hidden and observed the fight between Goku and Frisia. When suddenly out of the corner of the eye Frisia shot a death beam directly towards Yamcha's heart. Goku tried to deflect it. But he wasn't fast enough. Yamcha almost got hit by it. But I put a magic barrier between him and the beam and the beam got dispersed. Yamcha sweated intensely. He almost got Yamcha today. Fortunately, I acted quickly enough so he didn't die. But Frisia wasn't done yet. He tried to hit everyone else with his beams knowing he couldn't do anything to Goku without powering up to 100%. He was reluctant to do so. His power would drain extremely fast in that form as he used it very rarely. He didn't want to get exhausted by fighting WTH Goku then possibly die at some of these weakling hands. He decided to try to attack everyone as a distraction and run away. He didn't want to fight anymore, he wasn't sure how Cooler was doing up in the stratosphere. But he didn't care much either, he could die for all he cared anyway. Frieza was ready to make a run for it, but Goku suddenly appeared around him and caught him by the tail. He was ready to do his famous meteor combination. Goku threw Frieza and appeared in front of him catching him. The impact of the throw and the immediate catch immediately put a burden on Frieza's body. Goku hit Frieza directly in the chest making him fall as he started to fly up and charge a Kamehameha at him. Frieza tried to get up but he was disorientated and his whole body hurt from the attack. He knew he couldn't hold back anymore as his body buffed up and veins appeared all over it. He charged a giant beam in his left hand and shot it at Goku. Goku also shot his Kamehameha over and they clashed in midair. The power between them reached above 120 million. Frieza was giving his all and was breaking his limits. Goku increased his Kaioken, and it started to push the beam back down to Frieza. Frieza grunted as a maniacal light appeared in his eyes if the Emperor of the Galaxy was going down he was going to take some people with him. He was ready to directly shoot the planet with his other hand, but I stopped him with my telekinesis. He couldn't move his hand at all his key was botched in him unable to use his other hand to shoot the planet and destroy it. He looked at me with fear in his eyes and realized that Cooler was already dead. His brother's strongest behind his father was dead. He knew he had no chance of survival here, but out of sheer will he pointed his finger at Rashi and shot him in the lungs with a weakened death beam. He didn't know of my healing abilities so he wanted to take at least one of the weaker members of the party out. Seeing a defenseless old man it was his prime target. I was surprised then thoroughly angered by him. I immediately appeared near Rashi as he coughed up blood. Fortunately, he didn't hit his heart or else he would have died instantly. I started to heal him and after a few seconds he was right back up. Goku influenced by his Ikari mode immediately started to see red when he saw Rashi go down. His Kaioken dropped but his head veins started to show as he screamed, Grandpa! His power level was skyrocketing at enormous amounts as his Ikari mode was still on. His hair started to turn golden as his power level broke through the 150 million range, and it was still increasing, it finally stopped at 350 million as his form stabilized, while he could use Ikari. 
Mode and Super Scion, he wasn't the legendary Super Scion, so he couldn't get the extremely high power level boost like Broly. The power level multiplier was a surprising 230 or so times, from a million and a half to 350 million. Goku was panting hard as his energy was going down by the second. It seemed his body couldn't adapt to the combination either. He would need to train long and hard to master it. And if he ever lost his tail, he couldn't use the Ikari mode combination either. Of course, I was already impressed that he could reach this power. Goku started to calm down as his reason got back to him. He saw how Rashi was okay. But he didn't drop his transformation. He charged a Kamehameha wave and extinguished Frieza from existence right then and there. It seemed Ikari mode and Super Scion influenced each other and made the user way more uncontrolled and ruthless. Goku's combined transformation dropped, and he flew slowly to the ground where he collapsed. Raditz came over and gave him a Senzu bean which he swallowed, and he immediately got back up his power level doubled to 3 million. Vegeta was looking at Goku with envy, seemingly realizing that was the legendary transformation of the race. Nappa was looking at Goku with stars in his eyes as he made his way towards him and asked how he did it. Goku seemingly tried to explain, but he didn't know where to start. He just transformed once, and he wasn't sure of the certain trigger behind the transformation besides immense rage. Vegeta listened to the explanation from some distance away. Raditz was also listening. All of them wanted to become a super scion as well. I let them talk with each other, while Guru nodded from his seat and told Nail, Nail, go gather the Dragon Balls, it's time for my TV. But Lord Guru, we do not even have cable on the planet. Wish for that as well then. Get your butt in shape and go wish for it. Piccolo sweat dropped at the interaction between his fellow Namekians when suddenly Nail came towards him and said, Brother, I can't take guarding this guy anymore. Let me teach you a special technique which will increase your power level and relieve me from this eternal torture. Nail immediately grabbed Piccolo's hand as he started to transform into Blue Key and disappear. Piccolo's power level immediately increased to 3,500,000, and it seemed like it would increase even more in the future. Guru immediately shouted as he pointed at Piccolo's head. Nail, I know you are in there, you can't shirk of your responsibilities. You took a vow. Nail immediately said in Piccolo's head. Quick! Hide me inside some of your memories or something. Piccolo was dumbfounded at all that was happening. But he was also happy at the increase in power. So he did just like Nail asked him. Guru tried to sense Nail again, but he thoroughly disappeared. Out of nowhere, a little Namekian was summoned by Guru and said, Den from now on you will be the next guardian. Your first job acquire television and cable. Dend was flustered and he didn't know what to say. Guru put his hand on Den's head, and he unlocked his potential and continued, Chop chop! I want that television already! I sweat dropped as well at the interaction. I took all of the training machines and dematerialized the stage where they were put on. It was time to go back to Earth. Well, at least for the others, I had to deliver Jis back to his planet and Jika. It didn't take much time to deliver everyone back to the lookout and make my way back towards Namek. I could already see the giant dragon in the sky saying, Television? Cable? Are you sure about these wishes? Wait, you want to change cable to universal cable so you can see every show in the universe? Okay, what about the third wish, then? Uh, I can't bring back Nail since he doesn't want that. Guru immediately said, That traitor, after all, I did for him. He decided to run away with another Namekian. He took his vows. It seemed it wasn't an opportune moment, so I grabbed both Jis and Birder and used my instant transmission to go back to Space Australia. Jaika was cooking ramen in the kitchen when I suddenly appeared in two with her brother and his best friend. Jis' eyes widened when he saw his sister. I undid the key bindings on him as Jaika ran towards Jis, embraced him, and the smiled at me and said, You followed up on your promise, Mr. Krillin. Jis looked at me and Jaika with a questioning gaze Birder was just staying around awkwardly not knowing what to say. He knew of Jaika as he talked with her during the time she talked with Jis. Jaika let go of Jis and started to recount our meeting. 
omitting the other more sensitive parts of the story. Jis gasped then looked at me and said with a grateful tone of voice, I see mate so that's how it is. I'm grateful that you spared me and my friend Birder. I wasn't a big fan of Frisia's force anyway, but the pay was good and I was forcefully enrolled I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. Frisia would have my head and my sisters for it. So I did something that I'm not proud of during the years I worked under him. I nodded my head towards him and said, You can be redeemed as you still have a conscience. The same can be said about your friend. I can feel the aura of sin from the both of you, but it can be cleaned, be at peace both of you. They nodded their heads towards my words, and Jaika was glowing with happiness as I made my way back with her brother and kept my promise. I decided to do something during this time. Jaika, Jis, Birder. I know people on this planet will fear you since you previously worked with Frisia. Would you like to move with me to Earth? Also, you two could help me to root out the other forces of Frisia's and coolers of the North Galaxy and West Galaxy and East Galaxy. This could help you cleanse your sins. Jaika was already packing up while Jis and Birder were looking at each other then smiled, both nodding their head towards me. Maybe I could give them work in the Space Patrol Force or whatever it was called after this. They could use some relatively strong people in there. After Jaika packed up, I took all of them back to Earth. I left Jaika at my house and told her to get comfortable, while I took Jis and Birder towards the lookout so they could train themselves with the others before we got to exterminate the remaining Cold family forces of the galaxy. Next time, King Cold will die as well, and the Cold family won't terrorize the galaxy with their antics anymore. I told Vegeta and the others of their circumstances and Nappa and Raditz agreed on coming with us so they could cleanse their sins as well. Vegeta scoffed at the invitation and continued to train in the gravity chamber. He turned the gravity directly to 300 and continued to do push-ups. He wanted to gain the power of a super scion as well. He couldn't let a low-class warrior like Kakarot continuing to surpass him the prince. I decided to let Vegeta do his thing, it wasn't my job to take care of him. He could reach the Super Scion form by himself just like he did in the anime, his training was effective. I decided to train Jis and Birder, but Popo came out of nowhere and said that he would train the red and blue guys himself. Popo already reached the power level of 520,000 and he could rival Frisia in his first form. I decided to let the two of them taste Popo's training and left to check up on the dojo. Everyone that trained in the dojo reached an average power level of 50 and Chi Chi also started to train Gohan. Gohan's power level already reached 10,000. His talent wasn't there for nothing. Chi Chi also grew stronger by training with her son and reached the power level of 15,000 and it was still growing. Nam's power level reached 1,500. I also added some more instructors from the more talented dojo practitioners. Somehow Hercule made his way here and his power level was already 200. It seemed he had some talent for martial arts after all. I decided to let him become an instructor as well so he could get a better income combined with his restaurant so he could support his family better from what I got from him. It seemed his wife ran the restaurant while he came to train here. He thanked me after he heard that I saw potential in him and put him in the position of instructor. He had tears in his eyes. It seemed he wanted someone to realize that he was talented in martial arts. It seemed he didn't take Vidal with him this time. Well, when the time would come, it would come. Gohan was here every day. It seemed there was fate at work with some couples around. Was there any fate between me and 18 here or did my spirit break it? I was thoroughly different from the normal Krillin. It was the difference between the sky and earth. I wasn't sure if she would even like me. I decided to make my way home on foot. When I entered my house, I was met by a half-naked Jaika eating lunch from my refrigerator. I coughed, and she looked towards me with a blush on her face and she stuttered out, Oh, H -U -R -Y -Baka. Then she stopped stuttering and continued, Well, you know I like to be freer when I'm inside the house. It makes me feel better. She pushed her chest forward, pushing her majestic orbs forward. It seemed like they grew again. They were a bit bigger than before. She looked at me with expectant eyes. I didn't know what to say. I think it was okay since I had no other contact with 18, so it wasn't cheating on her, but... In the future, would I have to break up with Jaika if 18 liked me? It didn't seem right. 
but what if I could have both? Jika seemed pretty open-minded, so I decided to ask her directly, Jika, what would you think if I, uh, I was in a relationship with you and I wanted to add a more women in the equation? Jika put a finger on her chin and took a pondering face and she responded seconds after, I wouldn't mind. The leader on our planet has 60 wives. People with strength and authority can have more than one wife in my opinion. If you can make the other women you are interested in agreeing as well I don't see any problem myself. What an understanding red-skinned lady. Since she was so open-minded I decided we need to have a little fun. Before I made my way around the universe purging the remaining of Frisia's and Cooler's forces. After a fun time that consisted of three days and nights, I decided it was time to go and cleanse the universe of the remains of the Cold Empire. If I found cold as well it would be for the best I could destroy the problem at its core. I was standing on the lookout waiting for everyone to make sure they were ready. I would use my spaceship and go directly from planet to planet. If the grunts would give up I will spare them, but they would have to work restore the planets and free their population if the planets were subjugated. I thought thoroughly about the plan after I took care of King Cold and the rest of the subjugated planets I would make sure no one else would lust after the Cold's family riches by becoming the new figurehead of the intergalactic criminal organization. I would just cease all of the illegal work and transform it into something else. Maybe I could use all of the riches gathered by King Cold to restore damaged planets, save extinct species and continue growing the mortal level of the universe that way. I nodded my head towards Jis, Birder, and the two Scions. The Scions both learned how to control themselves in their Great Ape mode and their power level increased to above 150,000. Jis and Birder reached the power level of 90,000 and even created their stands with a little bit of my help. They were pretty talented. Even though Frisia was a giant egomaniac with a penchant of destroying planets that he found an eyesore, he did have a good eye for talent. Birder's stand was a blue hedgehog with green eyes. It looked quite cute. His power level increased by six times. G's stand was simply a kangaroo the mascot of his home planet Space Australia. His power level increased by 6.5 times. They were ready for the journey. The only remnants of Frisia's and Cooler's empires were only the weaklings the Jinyu Force and Cooler's armored squadron was already history. I popped open the spaceship's capsule and it appeared in all of its of glory. We entered the spaceship and with Jis and Birder's information about Frisia's planets we started our liberation of them with the nearest one being Frisia Planet 696932. The planet wasn't anything special its inhabitants already drained of their will to live. The grunts immediately surrendered after they heard of the news which started spreading in the galaxy of both tyrants' deaths. King Cold would be informed now as well. But my power level now reached above 15 million, almost 16 million, and I could use the super mode with the full power technique, Godspeed and Kaioken up to six times. Besides Perfect Cell, there would be no one else who would be my match. Well, besides Bu, who was way stronger than me, and Ambiris and Wiss and everyone else that came in Dragon Ball Super. I was quite strong for the time, but I couldn't slack off my training anymore. I needed to be sure I could take everything that would come next, at least Beerus could be easily appeased with good food. And I could do my best right now to increase the universe's average mortal level. It was a good thing to happen even if we didn't get excluded from the tournament. Having a stronger universe would lead to better life prospects to every living being. I could feel that my benevolent Buddha stand was quite interfering with my core personality, but it wasn't in a negative way I could feel that it purified my mind, and it increased my key's purity as well, everything was good, even though I did become more benevolent and hero-like, it wasn't truly a bad thing as I wasn't a weakling trying to get himself killed by being too heroic. I continued to liberate planets left and right, I didn't do the groundwork myself, letting the others cleanse their sins. I could feel their aura purify with time and surprisingly, Raditz and Nappa grew stronger by doing this, I could some special cells multiplying in them waiting to be awakened, I wasn't truly familiar with Scion biology besides knowing that they got stronger every time they came from near death and the ability to evolve during extreme stress, also being known as becoming a super Scion. I used my key sense in combination with my magic to examine deep inside their bodies and I could see some special golden cells multiplying in the back of their necks. 
with their auras full of sin they had none but as the sins got erased and the good karma started to gather those cells came into being. Birder and Jis got no such things however, but they did get more proficient with their stands as they fought to liberate countless planets. It took us approximately two months to cleanse the whole North Galaxy. King Cold should have heard about everything by now, but seemingly he wasn't trying to stop us. Maybe he was scared? I was trying to bait him out of his hole and exterminate him out of his home planet, but it seemed it wasn't possible. Jis and Birder knew of the Colts clan stronghold. They got there with Frisia during one family meeting where the subordinates would have to show their might. Of course, they lost miserably against Cooler Armored Squadron. Even their mighty Captain Jinyu couldn't touch Salz's boots. I decided to input the coordinates of the Colts origin planet into the spaceship and get it going. It won't take us much till we could reach the planet with my spaceship's fast speed. And so in a few days, we were there. I could feel an immense key reaching almost two billion in number waiting for us down there. It seemed cold was ready for us. I decided to let them stay on the spaceship so they wouldn't become collateral damage. I didn't save Raditz and Nappa so they just go and die again. Same could be said about Jis and Birder. I also didn't want Jaika to be sad due to her brother's death. I decided to confront him alone. I appeared directly into Cold's throne room. He was in his final form seemingly resembling Frisia's but buffer with green gems instead of purple. He was also way taller than Frisia. He was spinning a bit of wine in his glass as he looked outside at the scenery. He didn't turn towards me but started to talk. So you are the one responsible for all these damages done to my empire and the death of my two sons? He didn't sound angry, but his tone was bone-chilling cold. I grunted in affirmation. He got up from his chair that he lunged on and damn he was truly taller when he got up. He was two meters and thirty centimeters tall. He towered over my form easily as he crushed the wine glass in his pale palm and veins started to appear around him as he buffed up further. His power level doubled to four billion in number as he charges an extremely high amount of key in his hands ready to detonate at any moment. I immediately turned on my six dots combined with my full power technique as I started to buff up and grew to two meters tall. Pure white electricity started to arc around me combined with a faint red aura. I used the base form of the Kaioken to increase my power level by 1.5 times, rivaling cold in power and even eclipsing him by a 500 million. He detonated the key and the surroundings exploded. Key turned the icy planet into a water planet. At our power levels uninhibited use of key would destroy planets in seconds, we didn't even need to hit the core of the planet to destroy it. Of course, planets with a stronger mortal level would be harder to destroy, but this planet had some of his grunts and himself it was deserted. His race was extinct after all and he now was the last survivor. He shot towards me immediately afterwards using his bulky giant form to his advantage as we clashed in power. His height and weight gave him an edge over me, even though my power level was a bit more superior. So I decided to not play into his strength. I started to dodge around quickly by emphasizing my god speed. His eyes moved around trying to predict my moves. It seemed he was a veteran at fighting. He could only create such a big empire upon a mountain of corpses. And of course, when he started he wouldn't have any henchmen to do his work. I blitzed directly to his right as his tail suddenly slapped me in the face. I decided to take a page out of Goku's book and bit it thoroughly. His face immediately turned purple as he tried to get his tail out of my mouth. I kept it tightly clenched with my teeth and I started to pour a barrage of punches towards his stomach. My superior power level gave me a higher attacking power good enough to pierce through his buff muscles and thick skin. He started to vomit bile as I let go of his tail as he shot towards a nearby mountain. I appeared in front of his figure that was clambering to get to his feet and drop kicked him in the head. He became disoriented. Even though the cold clan's physique was very strong that only counted against people with the same power level or lower power level than them. People with higher power levels could pierce through their physiques if they had the knowledge where to hit them. I could use my magic and key sense to identify weaknesses through his body so it was easy. I put one fist in front of the other and took a boxer stance. I quite liked his fighting style so I decided to copy him this time. Combined with my extremely fast speed, it was basically like using time skip against cold. 
I hit him over all of his body with key enhanced fists as rays of golden key started to appear behind his back and punch trough. Blood started to seep out of the corner of his mouth as he smirked. Suddenly he lunged at me and tried to give me a big hug. Unfortunately for him, I could see what he was trying to do. He wanted to use his powerful physique to overpower me in close combat. But I wouldn't let him, even though he was stronger than me his speed felt off by a lot due to his increased muscle mass. He started panting as he tried to chase me around, it was a quite fun game of tag. But it was time to end this, there was no reason to continue. I put one hand up into the air as a giant destructo disc took the form of a giant blue shuriken that was spinning at fast speeds. I put my other's hand free fingers on my forehead and appeared directly above cold. He ate the full brunch of the Shuriken Kienzen special. The Shuriken Kienzen immediately started spinning like a meat grinder. It started to cut off his skin, muscle, and bones into tender meat which immediately started to vaporize due to the key properties and the centrifugal force that was added to the spinning Shuriken form. The Cold Clan was no longer existing in Universe 7. Well, at least in the living realm. I decided it was time to take the reins off this empire disband it and create something else out of it. Even though the planet was damaged due to our fight, there were still some grunts here and they're shivering and waiting for the results. When they saw me they knew Cold was dead and so was his empire. They immediately fell to their knees and chanted out loud, Greetings towards the new emperor of the universe. Emperor of the universe Krillin sounded good, right? I didn't want the title but I wouldn't mind being called that. I asked the grunts to show me where I could project my image towards all the active and known Colts family empire acquisitions. The grunts didn't dare to lie and took me towards a different building that fortunately didn't get destroyed during our intense fight. I entered the building and the grunts started to input some codes and press some colored buttons on the console. A special hologram immediately started to appear on the console. It was me and it was sent across all the galaxies on all the cold planets. I cleared my throat and said, From now on, there's no cold empire anymore. King Cold and all of his heirs died to my hands. I'm the new emperor of the universe, and I command all of you to cease all the illegal activities. The planet organization trade of the former cold empire has been cancelled. You will be briefed of the new work you would take soon enough by one of my advisors. I decided to groom Jis and Birder into advisors. They were more in the known of the Colts family system. I just needed to change what they did and impose bans and limits on the way they acted. I could of course still pay them what they were paid before I wasn't a tyrant. I decided that everyone would go and restore the planets how they were originally, and if any survivors remained of the original inhabitants of the planet, they would be helped to reproduce back the race and given ownership of the planet. I decided to not interfere in planetary politics if my people weren't involved. They would do whatever was needed to be done before leaving the planet and going to the other ones. There were millions or even billions of planets in the universe and while not all of them were conquered by the planet trade organization, quite a lot of them were. So it would take a while for them to fix everything. Maybe by the time Bu came everything would start to flourish again in Universe 7. I decided to take everyone back to Earth. Both Raditz and Nappa were pumped up for training while Birder and Jis didn't want to become advisors who would have to do work all day. But I told them all they would have to do is give me the important decisions, which would be reported to them by the other smaller workers who would do all the work. I need some more figureheads so the organization wouldn't feel empty of higher echelons. Former Frisia elite soldiers would put pressure under the underlings and make sure no one would defect. I didn't need bad-intentioned aliens free in the galaxy doing God knows what. I was responsible for them now. Redeeming themselves of all the evil and sins they did was the great path of the Buddha. I suddenly started to understand some of the words of the stone plaque I found on the desert planet. My power level immediately spiked to 20 million as my key became 1% truly golden and viscous. I could feel a special type of connection between me and the key now, it seemed like acknowledgement. I felt that if I understood all of those words completely, I would reach a maximum of 50% purifying of key. After that, I would need to purify it with my efforts. We all arrived back at the lookout, Goku was training very hard trying to master his super scion form combined with Akari mode so that it wouldn't drain so much key. 
compared to before this combination drained way more key than the normal super scion transformation and if he could master this one of course the normal one would be mastered as well. I motioned towards him and imparted the knowledge of instant transmission directly to his brain. It was one of the techniques he would have learned after he left Namek. But due to my interference he couldn't get it. Goku smiled towards me and nodded his head. It seemed he liked the technique. That was Goku for you. Being giddy like a little kid at every cool technique he would learn or want to learn. He immediately stopped his training in his transformed state wanting to master instant transmission first. I let him be there was still a lot of time left before the supposed androids were to come. Trunks didn't even appear yet. And by the interactions of Bulma and Vegeta, I was sure Trunks would exist. I decided I was in for some fun time with Jika after I saved the universe from the greedy paws of a galactic overworld intending of conquering it all for profit. A time of peace would hit the universe and Earth before the androids made their entrance. On a distant planet that was shaped like a pyramid with a giant tree that stood in its middle a blue-skinned man with white hair and a peculiar outfit looked inside a crystal ball that was embedded in his staff as a nearby purple humanoid cat who wore pajamas was sleeping and muttering, Whis! Food! Destroy the planet! Food not good! Bleg! Then he made a disgusted look on his face and he was ready to shoot a purple key ball out of his hand. The blue-skinned man known as Whis immediately used his staff to stop the key ball from destroying anything. He sighed and said, it seems this earthling is doing the work of the creator gods. Even though the Kai can't interfere themselves in this kind of thing, they could groom some champions using their divine techniques to help the mortal realm. He sighed again and continued. And Lord Beerus is still neglecting his job. At least he should try to destroy planets with no potential at increasing their mortal level, but he... Never mind, I can't do much about him. I can only instruct him and not force him. On different corners of the galaxies, multiple Kais were rejoicing as they met up for a party. The West Kai was a short, portly man with a monocle and purple skin. He had big elf-like ears that pointed upwards and a hat with a top that looked like a curled pigtail. The East Kai was a portly lady with yellow skin and orange hair who wore sunglasses with red rims and black lenses. The South Kai was a tall, burly man with pale pinkish skin who wore sunglasses with white rims and black lenses. The North Kai was a short, portly man who wears black glasses and a hat that covered his head. All of them wore the same outfit in different colors and different kanjis on the front of it. Their position was written in the front of their chest. They all wore gowns and differently colored undershirts. They all also had black antennas besides the West Kai. The North Kai immediately started gloating as he said, This guy who saved all of your quadrants is my disciple. You should repay me for teaching such a good disciple. He, of course, saved all of your galaxies while all of your champions couldn't do jack about cold and his men. The South Kai scoffed, and he said in an annoyed tone of voice, My protege Pickin just started training, but in a few years I'm sure he could have cleaned the floor with the whole cold family. King Kai looked at South Kai with a grin on his face as he continued his gloating. Yeah, but that would be in a few years. Don't you know how much damage the cold family would have done in those years? My disciple spared all of you of the damage. The West and East Kais kept mum as they didn't have champions who were strong and had high potential. They wanted to gift the blue man something just to make him shut up. He was extremely annoying. Most of the time they were the ones gloating over him. But now with his new disciple, he finally got something to back him up. And it wasn't something small. Suddenly out of nowhere, a pinkish skinned man with white hair with a blue undershirt and a red and yellow tinted gown teleported over as he said in a high tone of voice. The Grand Supreme Kai is making his way over. A light purple skinned man who wore an outfit similar to the pinkish skinned man but with blue and red instead of red and yellow appeared. He said in a light tone of voice, Thanks for the introduction, Kibito, but it wasn't required. I'm sure everyone here knows who I am. Every Kai bowed and nodded their heads. This was their superior. He was even higher ranked than Grand Kai, who didn't have time to join this party. The Supreme Kai known as Shin nodded towards King Kai and said with a smile on his face. 
I heard about your disciples' work in the mortal world, and I'm impressed with it. I also observed him and his work, his soul is pure, and he accumulated tons of good karma. He is a model citizen of the universe. I would like for you to take on this little gift of mine as a compensation for teaching such a great student. Also, send him my regards. Shin materialized a red Ferrari which he levitated nearby King Kai. King Kai gasped as his glasses almost fell off his face. He rubbed his eyes under his glasses to make sure he wasn't hallucinating. How did the Supreme Kai know of his dream car? The Supreme Kai just smiled and teleported back towards his world. With Kibito in tow, King Kai immediately started to gloat again in the faces of his fellow Kais. All Kais had a passion for fast vehicles for some reason. South Kai snorted again and said, What are you going to do with this fast car on your small planet anyway? At the mention of this, King Kai turned red in the face and then retorted, How is it my fault? Beerus sneezed and destroyed my other one. Everyone started to laugh at King Kai's words as the atmosphere lightened up after this story. Back on Earth. After I finished with my special time with Jaika, I decided it was time to up the training for everyone. I used one of my entries to the hyperbolic time chamber but from Popo's words I still had three more uses. I could train everyone in there and make sure we could subdue the androids peacefully if they were like in the original after they killed Jero and they understood they couldn't kill Goku because of his immense strength, they would just give up and try to live as normal humans. I also had to make sure Cell didn't get his perfect form and maybe even absorb someone else to get stronger since he was capable of absorbing normal humans while in the first form he could absorb other people for a power boost in his final form as well. If he realized he couldn't defeat me after he would hypothetically get his final form, he would try to absorb other strong people to boost his power, I couldn't let that happen at all. So I made sure after the androids were subdued to immediately identify Cell's whereabouts and destroy him till nothing remained. I appeared on the lookout and made sure everyone was there. Raditz, Kayatsu, Nappa, Vegeta who somehow didn't go into space to train this time around, Master Rashi, Tien, Yamcha, and Piccolo. They were all sparring in the gravity chamber when I teleported on the lookout. Piccolo started to mellow out around other people more after he fused with Nail on Namek. It seemed the other Namekian was influencing him a bit. Vegeta was as angry as ever, while both Raditz and Nappa still didn't catch up to him. He realized that they started to get stronger faster than him, the prince, the most talented of the race. I looked at Vegeta and he still had zero S cells in the back of his neck. He could still awaken them with emotional and physical stress though, that's how he did it in the original, it would just be way harder for him. I motioned towards everyone to stop their training and to come to me. They all stopped, even Vegeta, from the expression on my face. He knew I was going to announce something important. I nodded towards everyone and said, I didn't inform you of the special training room that's available in this place up till now since you were too weak both mentally and physically. But now you are ready to train in there. I called Mr. Popo and he appeared out of nowhere, as usual. He had a huge grin that showed his one tooth on his face. It looked extremely unnatural like he was forcing himself to smile. He didn't say anything and just let us enter the hyperbolic time chamber. I wasn't sure what was in that black genie's mind. I made them pair with each other and spar while in their strongest forms so they could increase their base while mastering their techniques as well. Raditz and Nappa would spar with each other trying to achieve their Super Saiyan form, Goku would fight with Vegeta. I made it so Vegeta could get triggered even more because Goku would already be a Super Saiyan. I made sure to tell Goku to never turn off his Super Saiyan in Ikari mode, to taunt the prince. Yamcha would spar with Tien and Piccolo with Rashi. Kaiatsu would focus on his mental strength by himself, while I would enter further into the chamber and train in a high amount of gravity. I left all of them to train nearer the entrance of the chamber as I made my way inside the infinite white nothingness of the hyperbolic time chamber. I made sure I was far enough so my training wouldn't disturb theirs. As I turned the gravity up to 5,000 times, with the gravity of the chamber being 2 times normal it became 10,000 times normal gravity. I immediately sat cross-legged and regulated my breathing while I endured the excruciating pain of my bones and muscles being torn, grow back and being torn and broken again. 
I decided it was time to fully master the Kaioken, Godspeed, Super Mode, and Full Power Technique combination. After I mastered this combination of techniques, I could become unbeatable to everyone besides the upper echelons of the multiverse. And maybe Bu could fight to a tie with me as well. Super Bu would make me exert myself, while Kid Bu would be easy to kill. Training inside a chamber of nothingness could make you forget about all notion of time. Two days already passed by when I stopped training, my base power level increased to 25 million, and I could use the combination of techniques plus the Kaioken up to 15 times. I decided to check on others, and I was surprised pleasantly by them. Goku mastered his Super Saiyan Akari mode, making him reach the multiplier of 300x and the base power level of 5 million and 500,000. While he couldn't beat Cold with his power level now, he could still fight Cooler and win. Nappa and Raditz showed signs of becoming Super Saiyan as well while their power levels reached up to 1 million plus each. Rashi reached a power level of 600,000. Piccolo's power level skyrocketed towards 3 million. Yamcha and Tien started to tie in power both reaching 900,000 and some. Kaiatsu was at 200,000. Vegeta was surprisingly reaching 2 million and 500,000. Goku was still wiping the floor with him though. Suddenly both Raditz and Nappa started to shout as their power levels skyrocketed by 50 times each. Nappa's mustache and tail turned golden while Raditz's hair and tail did the same their eyes were green teal color as well now. The combination of abundant S cells and highly intense training coupled with the adverse environment of the hyperbolic time chamber made both Scions reach their transformation. Vegeta was lying weakly on the ground after an intense sparring session against Goku, and he started grumbling, and I could even see tears in his eyes as he banged the white floor of the hyperbolic time chamber. He started to shout, I wanna be a super scion too. I wanna wanna. He immediately got up from the ground as he started to shout, and his power level started to skyrocket as well. His aura started to turn golden as his hair started to do as well his eyes started to flicker from black to green. But unfortunately for him at the last moment before he could truly transform he failed. S cells have been unlocked in the back of his neck. Though I could see them come into being and increase over time. Raditz looked smugly at Vegeta. A low class warrior outdid the prince of the race. He felt really good right now. Nappa looked with concern at Vegeta. He cared about Vegeta as he had to take care of him since he was a child. Even though Vegeta would have discarded him if he became useless. He approached Vegeta and patted him on the shoulder and said, You brothers should train with each other from now. I will tutor the prince on learning how to become a super scion from now on. Goku and Raditz looked at each other and nodded. While Vegeta looked at Nappa with what seemed to be gratitude in his eyes. Did the prince's pride mellow out a bit after failing to become a super scion? I decided to let them off to their own devices while I increased the gravity around me and started to continue my training. By the time the last two years were done and we were out of the chamber, everyone grew a big beard and we each had to take a shower and shave before everyone was comfortable around each other. My power level increased to 50 million in these last two years, the higher my power level increased the faster it grew. Goku reached 10 million after focusing on his base form after mastering the Ikari mode Super Saiyan combination. Vegeta attained the Super Saiyan form as well but he couldn't master it in time. He decided that he would keep it on all the time from now on, his power level reached almost 7 million too. Nappa and Raditz had enough time to master their Super Saiyan form as well. But unlike how Goku who got a 100 times boost after their mastery both got only up to 80 times I wasn't sure why, maybe it was innate. Their power levels reached 3 million and a half though so it was something, Kayatsu reached almost 1 million, Rashi reached 1 million and a half and he was still going strong I was happy for him, he seemed to enjoy getting stronger, it seems he was reminiscing about his younger years by training with us. Yamchur and Tien tied directly with each other at almost 2 million and some, both could use Kaioken times 20 and their stands in combination now, Rashi could also use Kaioken up to 20 times in his stand, but he couldn't combine it with the full power technique as well. Tien also couldn't use his race's innate technique to combine it with his stand and his Kaioken. But besides being unable to use my stand combined with everything else, I could say that this training in the hyperbolic time chamber this time around was a great success. I could use the maximum amount of Kaioken up to 50 times now combined with my other techniques.
It seemed I reached a wall during mental training though, while my body made my key training have no bottlenecks it didn't do so for my soul. Magic training came along nicely as well in the last few months of training, I could say everything was done well this time around. Bulma immediately greeted us, and she couldn't even take her eyes any more of the now blonde and green-eyed Vegeta. For now, I could explain why trunks of this timeline could turn Super Saiyan so easily. We still had time before the androids came, but suddenly out of nowhere a time-space portal opened above the lookout. Out of it came an intricate machine with the Capsule Corp logo on the side. Out of it came two silhouettes. Wait two. The silhouettes were starting to grow clearer as they made their way out of the time machine. One was a blue-haired youth with a blue jacket with the CC logo on the side. He had a sword on his back and blue eyes. The other was a dark-haired man with dark eyes and an orange and blue GI with the turtle symbol on the front and back. It was Trunks and Gohan. It seemed Gohan didn't die in the future like he would in the original. Trunks looked around as he spotted us. Gohan nodded towards Trunks and both made their way down as the machine got transformed into its capsule form. My group looked at them warily. They could feel their immense powers while both weren't strong as Goku in his Akari mode their base power level was 8 million for Trunks and 12 million for Gohan. Trunks nodded towards me seemingly knowing that I knew who he was. I nodded towards him with a smile on my face. The others looked at me and Trunks wondering how I knew who the youth is. Trunks made his way towards us with Gohan in tow as he started talking. You might not believe me, but I'm from the future, my companion as well. We came here to deliver some things that can't be made in the current times to save Goku. Goku looked at Trunks with a questioning gaze. He wasn't sure what would happen to him. So he posed a question himself. What will happen to me in the future? Trunks took a vial from his jacket's chest pocket and handed it to Goku while saying, This is an antidote that will save you later, you will encounter a deadly heart virus that would kill you in the future. Even though Krillin will expand your life a bit with his magic, he still couldn't save you in the end. The Dragon Balls couldn't help either as they can't heal diseases from natural causes. They couldn't revive you either due to the same cause. Goku nodded his head, he wasn't sure where he would get the heart virus though. I wasn't sure either, and here he didn't train on Yard Rat, but he did drink the Ultra Divine Water. I wasn't sure if the theory of the fans of the water giving him the heart disease was true. It was never explained where he encountered the heart virus. Trunks and Gohan were ready to leave. It seemed nothing else required their help besides the antidote. Seems the androids and Cell wouldn't be a problem at all in three years from now. They both nodded towards me and everyone else before they took out their time machine again and left in it. I could see Gohan shed a few tears through the glass before he thoroughly disappeared in the time rift. It seemed he would miss Goku greatly in the future. I decided to let everyone go do their things. Vegeta was invited by Bulma to go to the Capsule Corporation for a feast. I decided that I would announce the arrival of those androids later to keep them on their toes. I also decided to teach Piccolo a stand so he could get a transformation of his as well. In the original Piccolo was the guy who never had a technique that increased his power level. I also decided to teach him the Kaioken Namex had a strong constitution which could make them able to abuse the Kaioken. Piccolo didn't refuse he saw how the others benefited from the technique, and he wanted to catch up with everyone as well, especially Goku. I left him to his own devices as well so he could do his thing. One month from now, I would announce them of the androids coming so they could train harder. I teleported inside my dojo and made a headcount. It seemed the people who were attending increased. I decided to open dojos on everywhere on the planet now. It was time to expand to other countries. With the use of my astronomical fortune and my connections with the Briefs family, it was easy to buy plots of land in different countries and create dojos there. I would first teach them all personally the special mantra before training the more talented individuals and making them instructors. I also decided to let Jaika be an instructor in normal Australia. She would feel just like home. Well better than home, since people would listen to her and not avoid her here. She could also train herself a bit after I taught her some more advanced training techniques. I decided to also check upon Gohan, Chi Chi, Nam, and Hercule. They all got way stronger than before. Chi Chi reached the power level of 50,000 Gohan even reached the power level of 150,000. 
Chi Chi was astounded at the now almost nine years old boy's speed of growth. Of course, the power level was quite negligible if you would count the original Gohan, but the original Gohan fought Frieza and also gained some Zenkai during his expedition on Namek. The current Gohan was let to have a childhood. Nam and Hercules' power level increased to 3000 and 1000 respectively, pretty strong for humans, they could even beat some of Frieza's grunts with their martial arts and their power level. I decided it was time for Gohan to take training more seriously, so I took him as my direct disciple. Gohan stood before me on a fluffy pillow on his knees, as I imparted him a special mantra to help him train his key body and mind. Till now he trained with Chi Chi and he only knew the basic mantra taught in the dojo. Gohan started to mumble the mantra as his eyes shined. To achieve strength one needs to temper the body. Ki is elusive, but can be increased with meditation. Train every day to achieve success in martial arts. A great foundation built will lead to a great future. As he continued to chant the mantra his white aura started to grow into a sky blue. I also decided to teach him the Kamehameha, maybe I should let him train with Piccolo as well? Gohan was a bright young man with a great future. His potential was huge only below Frieza's and Broly's, he could grow way faster now that he got a special mantra suited for him. I also decided to teach the more advanced students at the first dojo better mantras than the basic one. The better students were called Felix Kelberg, Maximilian Muse, and Quackity. Felix Kelberg was a blonde man of average height, he had blue eyes and wore a green and brown GI. Maximilian Muse was a buff man who wore sunglasses. His hair was a dark green and he wore a gray and black GI. Quackity was an anthropomorphic humanoid duck who wanted to learn martial arts. The president of our country was an anthropomorphic dog, so I wasn't surprised at his looks. I decided to teach Felix the way of the Viking, Maximilian the way of the barbarian, and Quackity the way of the space duck. Each of the mantras had their special pros that would help their constitution and key grow at faster rates than normal. After I scanned them with my key sense, their power levels and physiques were laid bare to me. Felix had a power level of 70, Maximilian a power of 50, and the duck was surprisingly the strongest at 120. Their physiques weren't special or nothing like that, but everyone had a different physique which would be suited to a different type of technique. There were no two humans who had the same physique, even twins would have different body types that needed to train in a different type of martial techniques if the martial techniques could complement each other it would be the best for twins though. After I left everyone with new techniques I decided to let the three new best students become instructors in three different locations. Felix would go to England, Maximilian to Sweden, and Quackity would go to teach a special place. I recently discovered a place where tons of anthropomorphic animals like Quackity lived, they all had their community. They were very free and let everyone come and go through their city. There was a mix of humans and humanoid animals in the city. In human cities there were also humanoid animals but they were more of a rare find. But this city had tons. I decided to let Quackity train everyone in there at the newly built dojo. The planet was getting stronger and stronger every day. All the previous damage did by human hands was pretty much gone. Global warming was no more and the North and South Pole were starting to freeze again. In a mountainous area in an unknown location we could observe an old man with gray hair and a mustache who wore a black vest with orange pants and a top hat with the Red R logo on it mutter to himself while he typed some data into a giant computer. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get that Krillin's DNA, but I could get my hands on Son Goku's from when he was a child and some of his other companions unfortunately now that they are all gathered together I can't let my mini droids go near them without them. Being spotted. I guess I can only create a cell with what I have. He seemed disappointed as his creation wouldn't reach true perfection. He didn't even have Frisia's and King Cold cells. He came out of the laboratory where the computer was buried and entered a different one a few kilometers distance away. He started to continue his work on a husk of a being. It had a pail like a clown face and gray eyes. He also wore a similar outfit to the old men with a cap that had the same logo on it. The old man suddenly started to cough blood as he put his hand towards his mouth as he muttered, I think my body can't last much longer. 
I will have to do the operation now before I can continue the modifications on Android 20. At least 17 and 18 are done. 16 can't be completed in his current state. I just have to wait for 17 and 18 to mellow out during their reprogramming now. They were quite feisty when I caught them. The old man entered a different chamber of the laboratory and after a month came out looking the same, but he had no hat on, and you could see a glass container holding his brain. He put his hat back on and continued working on the pale android. Back on the lookout, I decided to announce every one of the androids upcoming. Vegeta scoffed at my words and said that no washing machine was a match for the prince of all science. Goku was pumped up for a fight while Nappa and Raditz didn't particularly care. The human Z fighters got heated up for training though. They knew they weren't strong enough to fight the androids, unlike the Scions who got their Super Scion transformation. Even though they got a stand in Kaioken it was still a tiny bit inferior compared to the mastered form of the Super Scion, as the technique still drained them, while the mastered form didn't drain the Scions at all. I decided to let the Scions taste some pain so I could encourage them to train better, I turned on four dots as my power increased by 16 times reaching the power level of 800 million. I immediately blitzed in front of Vegeta as my punch made his way inside his gut. He spat some liquids as he was knocked down. His arms started to tremble as he tried to get back up. I put a foot on the prince's torso and pushed him back down as I said in a loud voice. The androids would be at least as strong as this. Nappa. Raditz you still can't beat Vegeta yet. Even though you mastered the Super Scion form, what about when he does it? Raditz and Nappa looked at each other, seemingly knowing that I would beat the shit out of them too if they didn't comply with my words. Vegeta gritted his teeth at the humiliation as he suddenly buffed up, and his power level started to rival mine. It was Grade 2 Super Scion. He pushed me back, got up and threw a right hook at me. While the power increase was substantial in this form, the speed decrease was as much. I was practically dancing around Vegeta as he tried to hit me. He seemed disgruntled as he started to shout and charge his key. He put his hands together as a yellow key started to charge in it. Goku eyebrows rose as he shouted. Vegeta, don't you might destroy the planet? Vegeta growled at Goku. Shut up, Kakarot, your friend here is strong enough to take it. As he charges his final flash his power level skyrocketed higher and higher going beyond 1 billion. I just activated my fifth dot. When he shot his final flash at me, I directly absorbed it with my hands and redirected it towards a not populated galaxy. Vegeta gritted his teeth as his transformation ran out. His buffed out muscles turned back to normal and his green eyes and blonde hair got back to black. He was almost ready to master the Super Scion form. The others didn't train the Super Scion form anymore so they could strengthen their base power, but Vegeta still had to. Vegeta's power level was currently 10 million, while Goku's breached 15 million, Raditzi and Napaps reached 10 million, as well because of Vegeta's negligence of his base form. My power level also increased a bit from 50 million to 65 million. I could feel that my power would take a sharp increase in the months to come and before the androids could make their way here in two more years and nine months, I would reach beyond 100 million, maybe even 150 million. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.